The finger was like a meteor, shooting across the space before the coin. Just as evil I had done previously, Han San was dismantling the coin and reassembling it as something new. Evil I was surprised to see that Han San had managed to reduce his modified version of coin to dust, and the shock of the scene had frozen the spectators. No way. Dollar has that sort of power? Really? Evil Eye does something unbelievable, and now Dollar can match him? This bout just got interesting again. Things were happening too quickly for the audience to keep up with. They stared in disbelief as Han San dismantled the Geno art in moments, then began repurposing it to better fit his needs. All of Han Sen's fingers moved quickly, and the bits of shattered coin slowed smoothly back together. It became a new coin. But the coin Hansan was putting together looked different from the one that Evil Eye had assembled. It looked like gold, and all traces of the purple engravings that decorated the coin before were gone. And furthermore, the number displayed atop the surface was three instead of one. Young. Hansan finished the coin and fired it at Evil Eye with a fierce flick of his fingers. A gold light shot towards Evil Eye at an incredible speed. Evil Eye frowned and moved to grab the coin. But when he touched the coin this time, his body was pushed back. And then, every step he took left behind a deep, cratered footstep. The sand all around him was sinking. Evil Eye grabbed the coin, stumbling back four steps. Four steps, and he came to a stop. Holy sh asterisk t. Dollar actually did it. The coin has gotten stronger. It's now clear that this is precisely how the two will fight. I have learned so much today already. Wow. Those two can play like this? This Geno being scroll fight might very well be the most famous in all of Marquis's history. Ah, uh, but what Geno art are they practicing? I am afraid this is something only a deified elite could do. And it would still depend on whether or not the deified elite had the natural talent to use this particular art. If they didn't, not even those sorts could play as those two are right now. Why is the way that they fight so different from the way we do? This is a fight between true elites. These don't dictate superiority through the simple swinging of fists. Evil Eye caught the coin in his hand. His gauntlet was dented heavily by the impact, and holding the coin was not as easy as it had been. Evil Eye did not speak flippantly anymore, either. He made the coin hover over his fingers and imbued it with an abundance of purple light. Eventually, the coin broke. After the coin was dismantled and rebuilt, the number upon the surface of the coin had increased to the level of four. Pang! Evil Eye threw the coin at Hansen, and Hansen immediately grabbed it when it came within range. He didn't fall back like his opponent had, though. He snatched the coin out of the air as if there was nothing damaging about it at all. Hansen was using his ability to see sequence structures to dismantle the coin, but Evil Eye was using a very different method. Evil Eye relied on his ability to feel and control powers with extreme precision. Han San was able to see right into Evil Eye's nature, and he realized that the two of them were actually completely different from each other. Evil Eye was able to break down Coin's power by dismantling the coin with amazing, albeit primal practicality. That was also how he was able to reconstruct the coin. Evil Eye had been reborn as many different races. In his times occupying the bodies of the different races, he had frequently become deified. The power he had learned, and what he now employed, was quite scary. That was why he was able to use his own knowledge to dismantle, recreate, and modify coin. His power was entirely dependent on a deified's knowledge, though. Marquises should not have been able to understand things on such a deep level. This was all due to Evil Eye's continual cycle of rebirth. His mind-blowing abilities all boiled down to that. While that cycle of reincarnation had given Evil Eye incredible power, Han San saw the downside that everyone was ignoring. After all, Evil Eye could not see into the sequence structure properly. He only used his knowledge and his feelings to rebuild coin. While Evil Eye could still blindly assemble sequence structures that were mostly functional, his creations lacked detail and finesse. If Han Sen's technique of rebuilding Geno Arts was 100% accurate, then Evil Eye was only 99.99%. While the difference might have been small and difficult to recognize, it was definitely there. And that meant Evil Eye was not perfect. Evil Eye would soon find it impossible to beat Han San in this way, but Han Sun didn't mind engaging him in this sort of battle. As a matter of fact, it made him happy. 
Evil Eye was unable to beat Han Sin without a genuine ability to read sequence structures. So, to compensate, he found himself having to add his own power into the coin every time he rebuilt it. He used his deified power to increase the coin's potential. That meant there was a deified elite modifying coin for Han Senator. It made him even happier to go along with it. The two of them kept throwing the coin back and forth. With each throw, the number displayed by the coin increased. And every time the figure increased, the power of each throw visibly increased as well. Every time Evil Eye caught the coin, the ground beneath his feet would shake. Han Sen, on the other hand, could catch the coin with alarming ease. He was not being affected by the coin at all. That was why Han Sen said that Evil Eye had missed the purpose of coin. Although his opponent had managed to rebuild coin, it lacked a manifestation of coin's true heart. Evil Eye could use coin to throw attacks, yes, but he could not use the coins as well as he might have liked. Even though he had produced a coin that suppressed powers, it wasn't coin. It was not like the real coin that Han Sen wielded, in which power could be stacked. Boom! When Evil Eye caught the coin next, the number on its surface was tin. The purple color on his armor deepened, but it looked as if the color itself was struggling against the weight. It seemed as if it had been suppressed by coin too much, and it could no longer hold on. The audience was frozen. Right now, Evil Eye was at a disadvantage, and he was being suppressed by dollar. No matter how many times you attempt to replicate my work, you need to know that coin is still mine, Han Sun said, staring at his opponent with hard eyes. Evil Eye looked at Han Sin, and the purple bone flowers on his armor started to open like real flowers. A deeper, more disturbing power began to rise from his body. Interesting. Evil Eye suddenly smiled creepily. His hand released the coin, and within that purple light, the coin was reduced to dust. The gold dust drifted up from his fingers. It seems that I have underestimated you. Evil Eye looked right at Han's senator. The bone flowers across his armor continued to bloom. Each one of them made Evil Eye stronger. When the flowers on Evil Eye's armor opened in bloom, the mass of his power reached a truly frightening level. He was much scarier than even Dragon 8's gold dragon body. Your knowledge and control are better than mine, it would appear. But so what? Before a sufficient amount of raw, physical power, you have no hope of triumphing. You will ultimately lose. Evil Eye looked at Han Sen coldly. What? You lack skill. So you want to start brawling? Han Sen log head. Power and skill are never distinguishable as two separate things. Your knowledge and your ability to control the fluctuations of power is impressive, but can you apply that talent in actual combat? Mere talk is useless. Evil Eye said, his power continuing to burgeon. Then come and give it a try, Hansen said. Ha, huh, this is precisely how I wanted it. Evil Eye's body shot toward Hansen like a purple shadow. His skills were no better than Dragon 8's, but his entire body had been transformed into a killing machine. Purple flowers began to appear across his limbs. They swayed as if they were alive, and their sole purpose was to pursue Han Sen. For Han Sen, Evil Eye was the rare sort of enemy that required his full effort and attention. He was not the type of foe Han Sen could afford to underestimate. So he focused his powers and prepared the Dongxian Sutra and Heavenly Go to engage Evil Eye properly. He also planned to make use of Super Spank. Evil Eye's use of skills was fluid though. They kept on changing. He had a roster of techniques. After all, he had the skills of the dragon, the Buddha, the destroyed, and so on. But what's more, it felt as if every skill was mastered. While they might have all had different purposes and meanings, he was able to combine them all seamlessly. Every technique was stunningly employed, and every blow was followed by an unexpected change of style. The elites were all confused by what they saw. Many of their faces changed, especially when they realized that they were seeing glimpses of the legendary techniques of the race they belonged to. Hansen, on the other hand, fought in a totally different manner. His skills were very clear. They appeared simple, but they still had a depth to them that the onlookers couldn't quite understand. After watching many of his moves, the audience was able to understand how he was using his kicks and punches. No matter how much Evil Eye was able to alter his attacks, Wherever Hansen touched, Evil Eye's power would be reduced to dust. Super Spank was able to break and disintegrate every sequence structure it came into contact with. 
Evil Eye's body split into two, and both bodies attacked Han Senator there was no illusion, and the two forms really did comprise Evil Eye's actual body. And they were both equally powerful. Destroyed's doppelganger. Isn't that a technique that only one of the destroyed is able to learn? Everyone was shocked by this reveal. In the next second, that shock turned into awe. The two evil eyes split again, and now there were four evil eyes on the battleground. Destroyed's doppelganger technique was only able to split a person into three due to the origin race having three heads and six arms. Evil Eye was not one of the destroyed. He didn't have three heads and six arms, so he was able to split into four. That was rather scary. Hansen made no move yet, though. Heavenly Go was still pumping in his heart. Fighting four people was an insane thing to attempt, but even when faced with that, he was able to keep his calm. The four evil eyes piled on the pressure by surrounding Hansen on all sides with different techniques. The nobles that watched were all confused by what they saw, but they were able to understand that despite all that, Evil Eye hadn't exactly gained the upper hand. Powerful Evil Eye. Shkeri Dolar. Dollar is the one that is able to break down any skill he sees. The evil breaker powers of the dragon were weak to him. Don't you remember? Arg. He is so strong. Where did these humans come from? Aren't they so scary? Are all humans like this? No way. If all humans were this strong, wouldn't they be famous? They surely wouldn't be nameless and shrouded in mystery as this fellow is. I think Dollar must be the first elite humans have had in millions of years. What ability is Dollar using? Fighters are always weak against particular elements, but no matter what Geno art is used against him, he is able to break it in a flash. This is terrifying me. In Sky Palace, Thousand Feather Crane and the others were all frozen. Yun Sui pulled Yun Chong Kong and asked, Father, what is Dollar using? How can he break every skill and render all of Evil Eye's Geno arts useless? Because Yun Chongkong had business with the Feather, he hadn't returned to Sky Palace with Han Senator if he had been with Han San. Then Han San wouldn't have vanished in the attack. I am afraid that I do not understand either. Yun Chongkong shook his head. Hearing that, the Yun sisters and Thousand Feather Crane felt their eyes widen. Dollar was just a Marquise, despite how strong he was. But he did things that not even a king class person like Yun Chong Kong could understand. It was a very strange scenario, for sure. Evil Eye looked very glum as all this transpired. He felt as if the breadth of his power was actually much stronger than Han Sin's. But every time he came against the human, his powers were shattered. All in all, it made him realize something. He can use that dismantling power in combat like this? Evil Eye was starting to think that Dollar was some sort of old monster from ages past, and that he had lived through time by being reborn in the same manner Evil Eye had. To him, there was no other explanation for Han Sen's performance. Although he was able to dismantle powers, it wasn't something he was fast enough to do in a real fight. He could only see the weaknesses if he had time to examine them. Pang! Han Sen punched an Evil Eye, and that body degraded swiftly into nothing. The Dongxian Sutra's judgment and the formation employed by Heavenly Go were starting to come together. Han Sen was now the one controlling the fight. Evil Eye suddenly stumbled back and left the immediate battlefield. The two doppelgangers still functioning returned to the primary host and melded back into him. Just as everyone was guessing what Evil Eye would do next, his forehead cracked open. The third eye that had four purple pupils appeared on his forehead. Yun Chang Kong and the sky screamed. Sky. Evil Eye became one of the sky. That explains why I was unable to see Evil Eye's four evil eyes. They resided inside his third sky eye. SH asterisk T. He is one of the sky. That means Evil Eye has not been fighting with power. For the sky. Opening their third eye means things are just getting started. Evil Eye looks pretty P asterisk said. I wonder if Dollar will be able to compete against Evil Eye with his sky eye open. Hansen looked at Evil Eye's third eye. The pupils looked familiar, for some reason. And now that he realized that Evil Eye was one of the sky, that sense of familiarity heightened. In front of this monstrous power, your skills will matter very little. Evil Eye opened his sky eye. His power had increased by a vast amount, and the purple light of his sky eye flared the purple flowers across his armor. A fire kicked up, and it enveloped Evil Eye's entire body. 
seeing Evil Eye covered in purple fire, Hansen frowned. When a sky opened their sky eye, their general strength would leap by about one whole tier. Evil Eye's power was already above what could be expected of a Marquise, but now with the sky eye had opened, his power was comparable to the strongest of dukes. It was quite difficult to fathom how a Marquise could possess such grand strength. BZZD. The audience did not see Evil Eye move. All they heard was a sound, and Evil Eye's body started to appear faded. Before his body had completely vanished from that location, he appeared directly in front of Han San. He had moved far more quickly than should have been possible for any Marquise. It was way too fast for anyone to properly track. Hansen moved when Evil Eye did, though. He swung his fist, and when Evil Eye appeared in front of him, Han Sen's fist collided with the power his nemesis had prepared to unleash. Han Sen's fist hit the purple lotus flower, reducing it to nothing but dust. Han Sen's gauntlet shattered, and blood leaked from his skin. Evil Eye frowned, all the same. He was surprised that Han Sen had been able to shatter his power, even with the strength he now held. Evil Eye's power far exceeded what Han San was capable of right now, but Super Spank only had to collide with one small spot to set off a chain reaction that would wipe out a sequence structure. The collapse would build in strength as it went. Unless Han Sen's power was insufficient to exploit a specific structure's weaknesses, there was no proper reason for Super Spank to fail to break anything. For now, at least, Han San was able to break the sequence structures. And that meant evil I wasn't quite an overwhelming threat just yet. What threatened Hansen the most, though, was evil eye's speed after opening his sky eye. Not even he was able to follow evil eye's movement. He had to use his Dongxian Sutra to predict where evil eye would appear and Heavenly Go's formation to counter his attacks. If he waited for evil eye to make a move before reacting, it'd be too late for Hansen to block his strikes. Evil eye appeared erratically like a ghost that was coming at Han San from every which way. The purple flowers kept flashing near him. Every time Han San punched, a purple flower would vanish. But while many flowers were wilting, the elites that spectated the fight were having a difficult time grasping what exactly was going on. Many people had noticed that Evil Eye was moving more quickly than should have been possible, of course. But aside from that, they couldn't really tell what was special about the fight between Dollar and Evil Eye. Father, is there a point in them fighting this fast? Yun Suyi, who was lost in confusion, felt compelled to ask Yun Chongkong. Yun Chongkong sighed and said, if Lone Bamboo had shown up for his fight, he might not have been able to beat Dollar either. The Yun sisters and the others were all shocked. Lone Bamboo was like a god to them. Not looking away from the fight, Yun Chongkong said, his speed and power are definitely not up to the standard set by Evil Eye, but he is still holding his own. It's not as if he's being crushed. This fact alone makes him most excellent. His speed and power are inferior to Evil Eyes? I couldn't tell. I assume they were both even, Yun Sui said in confusion. That's what it looks like on the surface, but yes, Dollar is unable to match his opponent's speed. Even worse, he has less power than his rival, as well, Yun Chongkong said. Why does it look like they are even, then? Yun Sui asked. That is what makes Dollar so impressive. Yun Chongkong paused for a moment. Although you guys can't see this because of the speed of the fight, Dollar is moving before Evil Eye strikes. He's practically clairvoyant. It looks like he knows what Evil Eye will do before he even makes a move. He attacks where Evil Eye is going to be, rather than where he is. That is how this fight remains balanced. The Yun sisters and the others turn their attention back to the fight, trying to make sense of it. Thousand Feather Crane, as flabbergasted as the rest, had to ask, Isn't that what you find in the textless book? Is Dollar one of the sky that has practiced textless book? No, he is not using textless book. While I can see some similarities, they are not the same. Yun Chongkong shook his head. Even though he is able to predict evil eyes movements, how is he able to keep things in balance if his power is still inferior? Yun Su Hang did not understand this bit. I'll admit, I don't understand that either. Dollar must have a very powerful skill to fight someone much stronger than him, though, Yun Chongkong said. Every race was doing their best to analyze the fight taking place between Dollar and Evil Eye. They had all wanted to research coin, 
But Dollar's entire performance was a far better subject for study than they had initially thought possible, and the deified members of the audience were most fascinated by the fight. A pure physical fight was nothing to such spectators, but using such refined techniques over an extended conflict? That was something that deified elites very much wanted to see. The four pupils in evil eye sky eye were bright, and his speed and power continued to increase. Hansen was having a hard time keeping up with the fight. Super Spank was strong, and so was the Dongxian Sutra and Heavenly Go. But when the opponent gained too much strength, their effectiveness was reduced. Han San maintained his calm, however, despite the wounds that his fists were collecting. The injuries were so profuse that his blood-soaked bones were becoming visible through his tom flesh. They were the damage he had to suffer to keep breaking the sequent structures of his enemy. It was like pulling fishing strings. It was impossible to keep something that fine and tough from hurting you. But Han Sin's will was unwavering. Without a moment of pause, his excitement remained steady. Han San cast the Dongxian Sutra and destroyed the next sequence structure. He was able to predict evil eyes attacks, and the whole world through Han Sen's eyes was turning into a series of threads he could follow. Under the increasing threat from evil eye, Han San running the Dongxian Sutra in overdrive, and this pressure was going to result in his Dongxian Sutra reaching marquees. When the Dongxian aura changed, time itself became visible. For the first time in his life, Han San could see time, not just feel it. Earlier, Han San could see movement. Now, he was seeing actual timelines. In normal people's eyes, one person walking was just one person. In Han Sen's eyes, while that one person walked, the image of that person spread out like shadows all around them. Time, a second before, two seconds before, three seconds before. The timeline spread in three dimensions, allowing Han San to see options he had never previously considered. When the Dongxian powers changed, the feelings became stronger, too, and the timelines he could see extended in all directions. He gasped, seeing more than he ever thought possible. As his sky eye grew stronger, Evil Eye put Han San under even greater duress. While Han San was able to endure it for the moment, he wouldn't forever. It was only a matter of time before his hands snapped. They had now been shredded down to the bone. After all, Evil Eye looked excited. The purple light of his four evil eyes was shining, and his speed and power at greater and greater outputs. He was dying to bring an end to the man that had the audacity to fight him so successfully. The audience could tell Dollar was not faring too well. His power and speed were low. Even if his abilities could miraculously catch up to evil eyes, there was every chance that his body had already taken too much damage. It is time for a winner to be declared. One of the spectating elite sighed and looked disheartened. Dollar's performance had not been any inferior to Evil Eye's. He was just an ordinary Marquise, while Evil Eye was an old monster that, by all rights, should not have been allowed to compete with the others. They shouldn't have bracketed him in with the other Marquises. It wasn't fair. Dollar should have been extremely proud that it he'd fought as well as he had. The nobles and the kings thought it was a great shame and many people naturally sympathized with the underdog. In the match between Dollar and Evil Eye, they were rooting for Dollar. He was the weaker of the two, yet he fought with endearing courage. And so, the hearts of many kings and dukes went out in support of Dollar. But now, the situation was obvious. Although Dollar was a genius, his body was still far weaker than the monster he had been pitted against, Evil Eye. In this battle of bodies, he had lost. As everyone sighed glumly, Evil Eye felt a sudden pang of worry. There was something off about Han San. That worry made him want to kill Han San even more. He wanted Han San dead, so he could get this fear over with. Han San was suppressed, and his fists were bleeding. The bones of his hands looked ready to give up. But on the inside, Han San was feeling quite different. He was actually rather excited. The Dongxian aura was undergoing its final changes. The process of leveling up to Marquise would be complete any second now. Weird. In Sky Palace, the leader watched Hansen fight with a strange expression. What is weird? asked the woman with a black mask. Dollar is going to break through, the Sky Palace leader said. Breakthrough? I don't think it's possible to level up inside the Geno Being scroll. Even if he did become a duke, 
he would still be suppressed by the rules that bind him there. He would only complete an ascension after having departed the Geno being scroll. This has happened before, so why are you suddenly acting so surprised? The black-masked woman frowned. The Sky Palace leader shook his head. The strange thing is that I don't think he's leveling up to become a duke. The masked woman looked shocked. She said, You mean Dollar has two talents? He has two Geno armaments? And you mean to suggest that the other one is becoming a Marquise from the rank of Earl? The Sky Palace leader nodded and said, It certainly looks that way. The masked woman was dumbfounded. Double talents? And one of his skills can fight Evil Eye in this manner? Is he also a reborn monster? The Sky Palace leader did not say anything more. Silently, he watched the fight continue. Most nobles hadn't caught on to what was happening. Only elites like the Sky Palace leader had a grasp of the situation. Interesting. He has two talents. Isha sat on her throne, drinking wine as she watched Dollar fight. She looked angry. Burning Lamp Alpha frowned and spoke to himself. Double talents. And one of his skills is so strong already? Who is this human? It cannot be a race that has just entered, can it? Everyone was focusing on this fight now. Most of the nobles thought the battle had already been settled, and only a few elites could see the simmering change going on beneath the surface. Evil Eye was starting to look ill. He could see what was happening to Han Sin, but there was nothing he could do to stop it. Boom! In the middle of that crazy fight, Han Sen's body beamed with sudden power. The audience couldn't see that power with their eyes, but they could see the changes happening in Han Sen's body. After that, Han Sen's face filled with relief, as though he had set aside some mountainous burden that he had been forced to shoulder. His entire body glowed, as if he had been reborn. Evil Eye's attacks suddenly seemed weaker. It felt as if the storm upon Han Sen had been reduced to a few water drops. He could no longer stop Han Sen, who stood absolutely still. Han Sen's presence had been suppressed, but now it was unleashed in full. It made Evil Eye squirm, and all of his instincts screamed that he was in danger. What is this? Dollar had a breakthrough? I thought you weren't able to level up in the Geno being scroll? It can't be a new level. The Geno being scroll denies the ability to level up. No, he is definitely leveling up. Is Dollar Geyating? How can he level up in the Geno being scroll? De asterisk men. Does this guy have the Geno being scroll's favor? Has he been given the exclusive permission to level up here? Even if he wins, he'll win as a duke. He won't win the Marquis' crown. That's cheating. The whole world was shocked by what they saw. They weren't quite sure what to think about this, as it all looked too fake. He had leveled up inside the Geno being scroll. No, he's not a duke. It's a double talent. He has a double talent. And his other talent has become Marquis. SH asterisk T. This can't happen. F asterisk CK. Really? Dollar has two talents? And he's only been using one to fight Evil Eye all day? Crazy. Crazy. This world is crazy. F asterisk CK. Another monster. And I was just feeling bad for him. The revelation that Dollar had two talents swept through the audience like a tidal wave. His other talent was only just leveling up now. Many of the nobles weren't quite sure what to say. Boom. The Dongxian aura suddenly grew small. The world looked weird through Han Sen's eyes. In the next second, he lifted his finger. Evil Eye roared and rushed forward. His purple flame was burning like mad, and he was gathering as much power as he possibly could to go against Han Senator, but as the two closed on each other, Han Sen suddenly disappeared. In that moment when Han Sen went past Evil Eye, he appeared behind him and without injury. Evil Eye was standing with his back to Han Sen, and he didn't have enough time to turn. His eyes widened. Katcha. The white and purple armor shattered. In the space of a second, it was all reduced to dust. And as Evil Eye's helmet vanished, the world saw his real face. Lone Bamboo. The Sky Palace leader's face suddenly went ashen. And it wasn't only the Sky Palace leader feeling this way. Everyone watching the fight was in shock. Behind the veil of that white and purple armor, the combatant was revealed to be none other than Lone Bamboo of Sky Palace. One person was not allowed to enter the Geno being scroll under two different identities. Lone Bamboo had already been seen competing, 
so he could not have been evil eye in disguise. After a moment or two elapsed, the realization of what had actually occurred began to settle in. Sky Palace's leader had the quickest reaction of them all. He slammed the table in front of him, with a force that reduced it to dust. His voice filled with rage. He exclaimed, Evil Eye, I do not care what you are. For this transgression, I will make you suffer. Very few things could make the Sky Palace leader behave like that, but Lone Bamboo was one of them. Han San now knew why looking at Evil Eye had filled him with a disconcerting sense of familiarity. It was because his opponent, in some capacity, was Lone Bamboo. No, it was just Lone Bamboo's body. No wonder Lone Bamboo did not show up to fight. Han Sen stared at Evil Eye, who was wearing the guise of someone so familiar. Evil Eye stared at Han Sen, his eyes radiating evil. A cruel purple flame began to blaze out of him. Good. Very good. You have pushed me this far. You are the only one to have done this in over a million years. Evil Eye's voice hissed through a gap in his clenched jaw. The way he spoke made the audience shiver. It had been a million years since Evil Eye had felt the possibility of death. If he hadn't used a forbidden power to evade that last strike, he would have been turned into dust along with his armor under the force of Super Spank. But he used the forbidden power, and that meant he had entered a mode that was rather passive. In Evil Eye's sky eye, the flower-looking pupils started to wilt. Something was seeping out, swimming around the eye as it came. Because of that change, his body began to leak purple smoke. Someone was bound to put you in your place eventually. It's going to happen a second and third time, too. Just settle down and get used to it, Han Sun said, his voice grim. Earlier, he felt ashamed that he hadn't managed to kill Evil Eye. Right now, he was very glad that he hadn't. If his strike had been successful, Lone Bamboo's body would have been destroyed. Hansen didn't know exactly what was going on, but he had the feeling that the body really did belong to Lone Bamboo. You are right. It was bound to happen once, but you and I are different. You won't have a chance at a second or third time, because you can only die once, Evil Eye said. And then, all four of his purple eyes shattered. For powers beamed out of his eyes, which then turned into purple crystals. They were like shiny purple gems. A number of purple markings scrawled their way across Evil Eye's body, and then flames shot out of them. The purple flowers across him also started to become real, turning from bone into real plants. The petals spread across his body, linking together to form a new set of armor. Evil Eye roared to the skies above. The purple lights then drew together to create two purple butterfly wings. The wings each had the symbol of an eye on them and they glowed purple. When the flower armor and the butterfly wings appeared, Evil Eye's powers started to increase in volume. It was truly difficult to fathom just how strong he was becoming. Purple Eye Butterfly Many of the old people that were watching this fight couldn't help but balk at the name. Evil Eye is actually Purple Eye Butterfly? He's that asterisk shoal? In the dark land of sacred, Old Eagle looked at Evil Eye and clenched his jaws. He's not dead? Enti my frown profusely. In Sky Palace, the masked woman also found herself screaming. One of the ten generals of sacred? Purple Eye Butterfly. He is Evil Eye? Now it finally makes sense that he has been reborn countless times through the ages. The Sky Palace leader was still angry, and he snarled, Even if he's sacred's leader reborn, he laid his grubby mitts on my student. For that crime, I will kill him myself. On Buddha Planet, Burning Lamp Alpha found himself in a state of shock, too. Sacred's General Purple Eye Butterfly is not dead? This is interesting. Purple Eye Butterfly settled into a cocoon, only to become a butterfly. It is because of this he is practically immortal. But every time he is reborn, he can never finish the last step. Each and every time, he can go no further than becoming deified. In a black hole, Demon Alpha laughed coldly to himself. He looked at the person with disdain. All the elites of the universe looked at the evil eye's true form in a number of different ways. They all thought different things about him. Evil eye's body kept changing. He looked at his enemy, Han San, and said angrily, I wanted to find a stronger body before becoming a butterfly. I wanted it to combine with the host, but because of you, I have to waste my butterfly form on this petty vessel. And what's more, I cannot find myself another host now. 
That's fine though, I suppose. I guess this body is enough. Once I combine and properly assimilate with it, with that combination of power, I should be able to kill you. As evil I was talking, the purple symbols that decorated his butterfly wings became extremely bright. A strange, voluminous swirl started to appear. A light was dousing the entire area in a number of its beams. That light seemed impossible to avoid, but Han Sin gathered up a bunch of power to try to repel its assault anyway. But nothing he did worked, for he felt the light penetrate his body. Hansen felt as if he had been chained up. He no longer had any control, and he could not even close his eyelids. Hansen had always been surprised that his body was no weaker than an evil breaker dragon body, but seal powers did not work on him. Despite that, the light that came from those eye patterns were enough to shoot through his defenses and seal him. That light was too strong to appropriately describe. Han San wished to use his own power to escape the speed of that light, but doing so was useless. He could not break evil eyes eye lights, either. Purple eye light isn't an ordinary sealing technique. Even if a deified elite was snared by it, nothing they could do would allow them to break free. Dollar is just a marquise, and now he cannot even hope to tear up his own paper to escape. Purple eye butterfly can do anything he wishes now. The Sky Palace leader looked grim. He stared at Purple Eye Butterfly, thinking of ways in which he might be able to kill Purple Eye Butterfly for good. Evil Eye coldly looked at Han San and flapped his purple wings. He flew over to Han San, gritted his teeth, and said, I will make you regret ever having come into existence. Evil Eye flew directly before him, and Han San still couldn't break out of the force that bound him. He sighed and thought to himself, it looks like my only option is to use Super God Spirit Body to get out of this, but even if I do that, I can't think of a way in which I might save Lone Bamboo. It's not like I can kill him. But right then, Hansen had no choice. Just as he was about to use his Super God Spirit Mode, he suddenly saw Evil Eye stop in front of him. The purple crystal eye on his forehead began to bleed. D asterisk a minute. At a time like this? Evil Eye asked, his face twisting. His body came to a complete stop, and he hovered in the air above Han Senator. He brought his hand up to touch the third eye, but as hard as he pressed against it, the eye refused to stop bleeding. The red color spread across the eye, fighting the signature purple that tried to maintain control. Pang! Evil Eye fell from the sky. When he hit the ground, his knees thudded hard into the sand. The light that was shooting out of his wings released their grip on Han Sen, freeing him. That must be. That's Lone Bamboo. His will hasn't been destroyed by Purple Eye Butterfly. The masked woman hollered. Ha ha. Nice. That's my student for you. The Sky Palace leader let out an out of character laugh. Lone Bamboo's fierce will is still there? Even an old monster like Purple Eye Butterfly can't suppress his own will to go on? Burning Lamp Alpha looked on, utterly flabbergasted. Oh no. As other people of Sky Palace were beaming with joy, Yun Su Hang let out a sudden cry of terror. What's up, sis? Brother Bamboo's will is still present. Isn't that a good thing? Yun Su Yi looked at Yun Su Hang with a hefty dollop of confusion. Yun Su Shang's eyebrows knitted with worry. Yes, it is good that Lone Bamboo's will is still there, but he is in the midst of a fight, and that means he has stopped doing combat with his opponent. And with Dollar now being free, there has been no greater chance for him to kill Evil Eye. But if he destroys Evil Eye, he will be destroying Lone Bamboo in the process. Before she finished speaking, everyone suddenly understood what she was getting at. That turned their excitement into fear. The two opposing forces had been using all the powers they could muster. Dollar had only just been pinned by Evil Eye, and if Lone Bamboo's will had not shown up when it did, Evil Eye would have surely annihilated him. Now that Dollar was free and Evil Eye had lost control, this was his best chance to eliminate Evil Eye, once and for all. Dollar had just narrowly escaped death himself, so why would he hesitate to bring this fight to a decisive end? Everyone in Sky Palace was worried. They were afraid that if Dollar killed Evil Eye, then Lone Bamboo would be lost with him. And the people of Sky Palace weren't the only onlookers feeling this way. The audience understood what was going on, and they acknowledged the stakes. If Dollar struck, the entire event would be brought to an end. Evil Eye had been disturbed by the thrashing of Lone Bamboo's will. 
He was too distracted to counter Dollar right now, so it was best for Dollar to kill him immediately while he had the chance. Dollar and Evil Eye were mere feet apart, but no one could guess what would happen next. They only knew that Dollar would make the decision, for the ball was well and truly in his court. Dollar did not move though. He just looked at Evil Eye, who was kneeling before him. It didn't suit he look as if he had any intention of attacking. Struggling is useless. Give it up. Evil Eye barked, his sky eye shining with purple light. The next second, however, Evil Eye's sky eye turned red. Then, Lone Bamboo's voice sounded through his mouth. I have waited so long, and you have finally decided to combine fully with my body. There is nowhere to run now, even if you wish to. You think you can fight me? The sky eye turned purple, and when it did, Evil Eye's voice spoke. The sky eye kept flashing between the colors purple and red. Evil Eye and Lone Bamboo's wills kept fighting against each other. It looked like a pretty intense battle, as the controls for their shared vessel kept switching between the pair. The people in Sky Palace were happy that Dollar had not made a move to kill Evil Eye or Lone Bamboo. That Dollar is not a bad man, the Sky Palace leader said. Is Dollar crazy? Why doesn't he move to smite Evil Eye now while he can? Someone frowned. Maybe he is worried that Sky Palace would go after him if he did that. True. There is no need for him to offend Sky Palace for the sake of his reputation. While everyone was talking, Lone Bamboo and Evil Eye's fight continued. Of course I can fight you. I am fighting with you now. Lone Bamboo's voice sounded once more. I have lived for millions of years, and in each lifetime, I became deified. My will is strong, and you have only lived for a few meager decades. It is pointless trying to fight me. Evil Eye shouted. The red took over the sky eye again, and then, Lone Bamboo spoke calmly. He said, you are strong, and you keep becoming deified, but you always win, don't you? You have never experienced what it's like to be crushed. You don't know defeat, and you don't know what it is like to lose all hope. I don't need to know, and that's because I will keep winning, Evil Eye hissed. Why don't you try to submit to defeat? Feel the bitter pangs of disappointment. The sky eye had turned red again. When Lone Bamboo regained control of the body, his fingers turned into a sword. Then he brought it up to his forehead. BZZD. The sword mind touched his forehead and went into his own body. Spirit sword. Han Sin, upon seeing Lone Bamboo's fingers, looked utterly shocked. He knew exactly what Lone Bamboo was doing. His will was not enough to triumph over evil eyes. But Lone Bamboo had suffered the sadness of a multitude of nightmare lifetimes. Now, Evil Eye and Lone Bamboo were together. When their combined emotions were unleashed, Evil Eye would have to suffer the plague of depression, as well. Lone Bamboo had suffered through a lot that Evil Eye never had. He was strong like a deified being. But with those emotional terrors, it was difficult for him to maintain control and stay conscious. This was what Lone Bamboo had been waiting for. He hadn't fought Evil Eye yet because the monster still hadn't fully combined with Lone Bamboo's body. If Lone Bamboo had used the bad emotions earlier, then Evil Eye could have escaped them. Lone Bamboo finally had the chance he had been waiting for. Now was his opportunity to exact revenge. The spirit sword unleashed the bottled emotions of sadness, and the flood drowned the opposing force of willpower. Evil Eye and Lone Bamboo sank under the overwhelming sadness. And right then, Lone Bamboo became the boss. Enjoy what it is like to experience failure and hopelessness. Lone Bamboo exclaimed. Impossible. How arg. Evil Eye let out a scream. The grueling emotions were ravaging his willpower. They were washing away all he thought true into the oceans of misery. Han San had experienced the nightmares once before, and after his brief time, he already lost himself to them. But now... Evil Eye had taken over Lone Bamboo's body. That meant he was Lone Bamboo. And that also meant he had accepted all the emotions that burdened the man. All of a sudden, countless varieties of hopelessness were being forced onto his shoulders. Even a deified elite would be crippled by all that. Lone Bamboo's third eye continued to bleed blood. His expression held shock and sadness, but most of all, it was filled with despair. No wonder I haven't seen Evil Eye use textless book to try to free himself. Hansen let out a sigh. When he saw Spirit's sword trigger all those ghastly emotions, he knew things were practically over. 
Lone Bamboo could keep himself calm and controlled beneath the pressure of all that sadness, but Evil Eye couldn't. That meant Evil Eye was trying to fight two forms of willpower at once. And just as Lone Bamboo had said earlier, Evil Eye had never once experienced the depression that accompanies failure and loss of hope. Now that Evil Eye had to fight against the emotions crushing him, he had little strength left to resist Lone Bamboo. He couldn't fight back, and he was done for. How could it all end like this? This is impossible. Evil Eye screamed. The purple light in his eyes began to thin and flicker. It was being consumed by blood. He would have already escaped if he could have, but his body was completely assimilated with Lone Bamboo, and there was nowhere he could run. If he left Lone Bamboo's body, his will would be the only thing he could take with him. All the Geno teachings he had gathered across the millennia would be left behind. No. No. Evil Eye sounded hopeless, and for the first time, he sounded downright scared. The purple lights of his life began to dim. The purple butterfly wings behind Lone Bamboo also began to fade away. The flower armor started to wilt, die, and fall. As the flowers and wings disappeared, Lone Bamboo's real form became more and more visible. Suddenly, Lone Bamboo's third eye flashed with purple. A light emerged in the form of a butterfly, and it flapped its wings and tried to fly away. Katcha! Hansen threw a punch. His power couldn't touch the purple butterfly, as its form was like a non-physical shadow. You guys better not bump into me again. If you do, I'll torture you to death. The purple butterfly spoke with Evil Eye's voice, and it sounded horribly bitter and angry. It flapped its wings and headed for the paper. Pang! Seeing that the purple butterfly had almost reached the paper, Han Sin used Super Spank from his hand. The blow turned the butterfly into dust. Xenogenic deified being hunted. Purple Eye Butterfly. Obtained Purple Eye Butterfly B Soul. Han Sin hadn't expected to get a kill announcement when the butterfly was destroyed, since what he had killed was the final, fleeting bit of Purple Eye Butterfly's willpower. It made sense that he hadn't gotten a xenogenic gene, though, since Purple Eye Butterfly's decision to combine with Lone Bamboo's body had probably negated the gene's existence. But Han Sin was more than surprised that he had managed to obtain a deified beast soul. Purple Eye Butterfly had become deified many times, despite having only reached the level of a Marquise during this cycle. Han Sin thought he'd get a Marquise beast soul if he got one at all, and he never dreamed of snagging a deified item. But Han Sin had missed one crucial fact. Whenever Purple Eye Butterfly took a new host, it brought a seed of power with it. Using his deified will and his seed of power, Evil Eye would strengthen his host as much as he could, eventually becoming deified. Once he became deified, power would feed back into his will and his seed, strengthening them even more to prepare for the next cycle. Evil Eye Butterfly was reborn again and again, and each time, he sought to make his seed stronger. He did this over and over to achieve the final step of ascension, but so far, he had not managed to reach the final step. He had only gone far enough to become deified. Lone Bamboo's flower armor was now all dead, and the color of his eye turned a permanent shade of red. And then, a white and purple armor began to clothe Lone Bamboo. Purple butterfly wings also began to spread from his back. This looked quite different from his old Geno armor, and it must have been the result of him combining with Purple Eye Butterfly. Sorry to keep you waiting, Lone Bamboo said calmly as he looked up at Dollar. The paper for Evil Eye disappeared, and in its stead, a new one manifested. It read, Sky, Lone Bamboo. SH asterisk T. Sacred's General Purple Eye Butterfly has been killed. It is a shame a deified elite is now gone for good. No one told him to become deified. It was not difficult to kill him. Purple Eye Butterfly was murdered. Those two Marquises killed him. Ah, he should have died a long time ago, anyway. Dollar behaved honorably, though. He didn't sneak in a quick victory. He could have Lone Bamboo and Evil Eye at the same time, but he didn't. It looks like this fight is set to continue. Dollar looks strong, but Lone Bamboo is certainly stronger. He broke Purple Eye Butterfly's will so he must have a deified will himself. I wonder who will win now? Han Sin looked at the restored lone bamboo and felt a jolt of happiness run through him. But he kept his calm and said, That's okay. I can wait a while longer, 
if that's what you need. You can start. I don't need to rest. Lone Bamboo shook his head. The fight hadn't even started yet. It was like everything had been reset. Lone Bamboo flapped his butterfly wings and said, It seems I have combined with Purple Eye Butterfly, and in addition to the wings, I have his Purple Godlight. That's okay. Feel free to use it, Hansen said. Okay. Lone Bamboo nodded. Then, the symbols of eyes began to light up across the wings. The light spread until it burst out and flew toward Han San. Lone Bamboo is very strong, and now he has Purple Eye Butterfly's godlight. I am afraid Dollar won't stand a chance. He is too arrogant. He deserves what's coming to him. You don't know anything. That was a fine display of chivalry. Only winning can make someone an elite. Losers are pigs and nothing more. But Lone Bamboo's being an asterisk shoal, Dollar just let him go instead of killing him. It's not very nice that he now wants to fight him. Winning is all that matters. Dollar is stupid for not finishing him off, so you can't really fault Lone Bamboo for behaving this way. No matter what, if Dollar is unable to break the Purple Eye Godlight, he will lose. Dollar is a really strong individual. I don't think he is stupid enough to make a mistake like this. Someone as strong as he is should not make such a stupid move. He must have a way in which to deal with the Purple Eye Godlight. Otherwise, why would he not strike when he had the chance? If he could defend himself against it, why would he have stayed under Evil Eye's control for so long earlier? He's taken this bluff too far. I bet he thought that after their tussle, Lone Bamboo or Evil, I would be extremely injured when they emerged. But no, Lone Bamboo wasn't injured, and on top of that, he has walked away with the benefits of Purple Eye Butterfly. Hansen felt the Purple Eye Light wrap around him. He was restricted, and just like before, he was unable to move a muscle. Since Lone Bamboo was using the Godlight as a marquise, Hansen doubted that he would be able to last very long. But if Lone Bamboo could keep it up for even just a second, that would be enough time for him to defeat Hansen with a single attack. Hansen tried to struggle out of the light's grasp or break it, but all his attempts failed. I need to research the Purple Eye Butterfly's ceiling light. I can't depend on Super God Body to bail me out all the time. Han Sen thought about Purple Eye Butterfly, and then his mind raced back to the Beast Soul he had received. He decided to give it a look. Deified Beast Soul. Purple Eye Butterfly. Spectacles type. Spectacle? Is this some kind of lenses? Like an ordinary pair of glasses that you can wear when you go out? Han Sen thought, as he prepared to summon the Beast Soul. It was the only deified beast soul that he had. If he used it as dollar, and other people saw it, he'd be unable to use it as his real self. Han Senator, if he didn't absolutely have to use it. Han San did not want to expose it to the public now and risk identifying himself. Purple Eye Butterfly's godlight is rather strong. I can't maintain it very long as a marquise. Lone Bamboo looked at Han San, but he did not make a move. Then don't waste time, Han San responded suddenly. A gold light enveloped Han San and turned his gold armor translucent, and he stepped through the purple god light like it wasn't even there. The purple eye god light didn't work? The audience gaped. Purple Eye Butterfly was one of Sacred's ten generals. His power placed him among the greatest elites, and that was especially true of his purple eye god light. It might have been the best ceiling power in the entire universe. If the deified elites did not have a way of blocking or avoiding that light, they'd be restricted from making a single move. Carrot rendered helpless. Lone Bamboo was only Marquise, though, so the Purple Eye Godlight wasn't very strong. But against someone of the same level, there shouldn't have been a problem at all. But Hansen had easily broken the Purple Eye Godlight. Witnessing something like that was incredibly scary. That is the power. That is dollar. Isha, seeing Hansen make use of Super God Spirit, became infuriated. When Han Sen entered Super God Spirit Mode, his body exuded a most terrifying presence. Beneath the Purple Eye Godlight, Han Sen pointed at Lone Bamboo with his finger. A power gathered upon his fingertip. It looked as if they were both partners in a dance, as Lone Bamboo opened his sky eye at the same moment. Then, blood washed over his body like an ocean wave. It painted his entire form, drenching him. It also combined with his purple armor and wings. His entire body was purple and red now, as if he was standing in a bloodlight. Lone Bamboo lifted his finger as well, 
pointing it at Han Sun like a sword. His body was red and purple, but the sword air was devoid of color. It was invisible. If his sword air hadn't been under the red and purple light, the crystal-looking sword would have been completely invisible to people as well. Endless Sky Path from Textless Book The Sky Palace leader noticed the sword air amassing on Lone Bamboo's finger and gasped. With eyes wide open, he stared at his fingers. No way. How long has he been practicing? He has learned Endless Sky Path. Are you sure? The woman with a black mask looked at the leader with an expression of utter disbelief. The Sky Palace leader laughed. It sounded like nonsense, but he said, Ha ha, of course I'm sure. He is my student. He's been studying the core of Endless Sky Path from the textless book ever since becoming a Marquise. He is a good student, and I'm telling you, there is no one stronger than him in this universe. He learned Endless Sky Path at this age. Sky Palace is that fortunate? Mumbled Burning Lamp Alpha. He was not looking good at all. Sky Palace has a bullsh asterisk t amount of luck. Many of the older people that watched, when seeing this, became seething mad with jealousy. Textless book was difficult to learn. By only learning 20% of its contents, a student could rule the world. But learning the core of Endless Sky Path was even more difficult. Not many of the sky had learned the textless book, and even fewer knew much about Endless Sky Path. The handful of people who had learned it were King Class. The Sky Palace leader learned Endless Sky Path when he was a duke, and people believed he was the most impressive genius in existence for having done so. But now that Lone Bamboo had Endless Sky Path as a marquise, it was a bit of an understatement to say that people were shocked. Hansen and Lone Bamboo were both building power. The red and white powers were like two gods, burning with rage for one another. Even looking at them was terrifying. Both of their powers peaked, and then they moved. Hansen looked like a god with his finger raised. It wasn't a beautiful technique to witness being performed, but it was incredibly fast. It was as simple as it was violent. Lone Bamboo thrust his finger forward, too. The sword air headed towards Hansen with all the power of a runaway locomotive. Katcha! The powers both went right by each other, and when they did, the audience heard a sound like an egg cracking. Lone Bamboo's armor of red light shattered into dust, but Dollar was totally fine. I lost. Thanks. Lone Bamboo nodded to Han Sen seriously, then tore up his paper. He vanished from the stage of the Geno being scroll. Impossible. How could Endless Sky Path lose? That was the essence of Sky Path. You can time travel with it. How could anyone lose with it? The Sky Path leader stared at the Geno being scroll at a complete loss. He could not believe what he had just witnessed. He knew precisely how powerful Endless Sky Path was, and that was why he was so shocked. Endless Sky Path lost. Many of the old elites were shocked by this, too. They looked upon the gold body inside the Geno being scroll with trepidation. Human. Dollar. Countless eyes stared at those two words, transfixed. The audience was a huge wash of emotion, including everything from jealousy to admiration to fear. Boom. The Geno being Scroll's river broke. And then, Dollar disappeared from sight. After that, a video played across the bronze scroll. The video replayed Dollar's fights. Every elite stared at Dollar's Geno being fights intently, as each one was being replayed consecutively, until the final one where he reached first place. No one had thought the final victor of the Marquis tier would be a human named Dollar. Every noble looked at the final result, unsure how they should respond. Dollar's fights were in full display across the breadth of the bronze scroll, and the sight of his gold body now elicited a very different reaction than it had before. He had reached the first place of the Marquis tier, proving himself to be the strongest in existence. The video stopped at the precise moment Dollar and Lone Bamboo moved to engage each other with their fingers. And then, before the eyes of all, the video shattered. The view zoomed closer on the gold body until his image was the only thing seen across the entire bronze scroll. It shone so brightly, anyone from any corner of the universe could see it clearly. Ten minutes later, the gold body was removed from sight, and Dollar's name appeared atop the Geno being scroll scoreboard. First place marquees, human Dollar. Out of all the tiers, that had been the longest fight. Other tiers had already crowned their first places. 
The being to claim first place in the Viscount tier was Han Little Flower. This was the first time that Han Sin had gotten to lay eye carrot on Han Little Flower. Lone Bamboo sat beside a rolling stream. The little girl gazed at Lone Bamboo with a conflicted look in her evil eyes. Who are you? Lone Bamboo asked the little girl. I am the flower, the little girl answered. What flower? Lone Bamboo asked. Butterflies can't live without flowers. If they tried to, they'd die. I am that flower, the little girl answered. Lone Bamboo nodded, and he seemed to understand her. He looked at the little girl briefly, before rising to take his leave. Why don't you just kill me? Shouldn't you hate me? The little girl asked Lone Bamboo's shrinking shadow. Ever since a little girl left me, I have vowed to never take the blood of another young girl, Lone Bamboo said coldly. Without looking back, he kept walking away. If you do not kill me, then I will surely be the one to kill you. The little girl's body flashed. Her hands turned red, and she came soaring over to Lone Bamboo's back. Pang! When her hands came into contact with Lone Bamboo's back, her fists left behind two red marks. But even so, Lone Bamboo seemed as if he had barely noticed her. The little girl's shock gave way to rage, and she screamed at Lone Bamboo's back. You are stupid not to kill me. You know that? I will avenge Evil Eye's death one of these days. You will come to regret this. The only regrets I have are the times when I was stupidly not myself. Lone Bamboo waved his hand at her, as if he was saying goodbye. If killing me in revenge is what you seek, then I earnestly advise you to get stronger. For as long as I live, the opportunity for you to claim the vengeance you desire will be available to you. The little girl stared at Lone Bamboo's back until he faded from view completely. The Geno being scroll fights came to an end, at long last. Hansen took a detour and arrived at Sky Palace. The Sky Palace leader was happy to have Hansen return in good health, and during their meeting, Hansen took the opportunity to ask about Sacred. Leader, I have heard that the purple eye butterfly hails from Sacred. Can you tell me a little about what Sacred is like? Han San did his best to make it sound like he asked the question out of simple curiosity. He didn't want to risk the leader looking into his mind and reading his true thoughts. The Sky Palace leader retreated into thought for a moment, and then went on to say, Sacred was once a grand, powerful faction. They held the very top spot in the Geno Hall, but they fell into disarray and collapse a long time ago. Many races don't know a thing about the ancient Sacred and I must confess that not even I suspected one of their generals was still alive. Were the ten generals of Sacred deified? Hansen pretended as if this surprised him. They were, indeed. And there were more than merely ten of them. The ten generals were simply the strongest of their ranks, the Sky Palace leader said. Hansen was quite surprised by this, and so he said, to have such power, and yet they still fell. Who could have done that to them? Nobody knows. The answer to that question is something many of the elders have sought to learn. And scour the universe as they might. Nothing has been explained. If they had learned the truth, perhaps there wouldn't be such a barren system. The Sky Palace leader let out a long sigh. Sacred is in the barrens? Hansen was shocked. He forced himself to stop thinking. All of the barrens is territory that once belonged to Sacred, the Sky Palace leader said with a nod. That Viscount in first place could be a genuine heir of sacred. If you ever encounter him, be careful. He may not yet be a Marquise, but we do not know if they have any more such people in the ranks of sacred. We are all going to have to be careful. Hansan took his leave and started mulling things over. The barons used to belong to sacred? That means Little Flower must be there. The entrance to the sanctuaries is there, as well. Nine Life Cat is associated with sacred and on top of that, he can enter the sanctuaries. Does Sacred have something to do with the existence of the sanctuaries? Han San spent a lot of time thinking those questions over, but he couldn't discern much. He couldn't confirm any of the guesses he managed to come up with. The only lead he had at the moment was the location. But getting through the barrens might very well be impossible if you weren't deified. The entrance to the sanctuaries was in the barrens someplace and so Han San collected as much information about the region as he could. All the races said the same thing, though. If he wasn't a deified elite, then it was best not to even think about venturing there. Even king-class elites might meet a swift death by traversing such a place. 
If the place hadn't been so terrifying, then the crystallizers would have made it back into the gene universe ago. They wouldn't have died as soon as they made the journey. Han San gave up on thinking about forging a path to the sanctuaries, but he hadn't expected Sacred and Little Flower to be in such a dangerous area. F asterisk CK. So what if it's in the Baron systems? No one should be able to stop me from searching for my own son. Han Sen growled angrily as he went to the White Jade Jing. He needed to be king class before he could even think about going to the Barons. If he didn't at least reach that height, death would surely find him there. So, his priority for the time being was to get better. Coming into the White Jade Jing, he entered the second White Jade building. When he reached the seventh floor, he saw Lone Bamboo. He smiled and said, it's a shame that you fell short of first place. Lone Bamboo responded resolutely, It is? But what happened is simply driving me to become even stronger for the next time. You are boring. Can you not make a more exciting promise, like saying you'll beat Dollar? Hansen Smi Lid. I think beating you first might be useful. After the White J Jing shuts down, how about you and I go spar? Lone Bamboo looked at Hansen. Um, I have important things to do. Perhaps next time? Hansan was not interested in fighting Lone Bamboo. This was especially true since the man now possessed the Purple Eye God Lights. Without making use of Super God Spirit, it was unlikely Hansan would actually be able to defeat Lone Bamboo. Hansan finished absorbing the Jade Spirits, and the White Jade Jing closed. So, Hansan quickly abandoned the White Jade Building and went to Dream Island to pick up Bauer. Before Hansan went to Holy Heaven, he sent Bauer to Dream Island. Under the ardent protection of the Dream Beast, no one would even think about bothering her. Dad. Upon seeing Hansen, Bauer leaped into his arms. After thanking Dream Beast for keeping her safe, Hansen took Bauer to Jade Island. Isha used to say Sky Palace would help me reach Marquis, but it is so difficult to get the story of Jeans to Marquis tier. After I do become Marquis, how am I supposed to find the necessary resources to reach Duke, and then King? The story of Jeans was really starting to give Han San a headache these days. It took far too much work and resources to keep upgrading the story of Jeans, and on top of that, he had yet to see what power it actually provided. Han San was in the midst of plotting out his future course when he heard someone shouting his name from just beyond the borders of his little island. The Yoon sisters and Thousand Feather Crane had come to see him. Han Sen welcomed them over to a table that was sitting next to an old tree. There, he told them all to sit down. I was going to visit you guys, as a matter of fact. But look, you guys came to see me, instead, Han Sen said, as he started to serve each of them some tea. Yun Sui smiled and said, We didn't come here of our own volition. We are here delivering word from my father. You do not have much time left. Not much time left with what? Hansen was surprised to hear this. It is time that you have to teach in the training ground, Yun Susheng smiled. I see. I would have forgotten if you did not come to tell me. I will go first thing in the morning. Hansen now remembered that he had intended to teach a while ago, but events beyond his control had taken him away from Sky Palace. He had put this off for an entire year, and he still owed the ten days of teaching. Brother Han, what are you going to teach? Thousand Feather Crane asked. I was thinking about suppress evil, Hansen said. If he was able to teach suppress evil, that would probably be the best option. You are going to talk about suppress evil? Thousand Feather Crane and the others were shocked to hear this. Is that a bad idea? Am I not allowed to talk about it or something? Hansen asked, with a visible look of confusion. Of course you are allowed to talk about it, but Thousand Feather Crane did not continue. It seemed as if he wanted to avoid saying something hurtful. Instead, Yun Sui continued on his behalf, saying, But suppress evil is very difficult to teach. And there is already a teacher that speaks about suppress evil. On top of that, he is very good with it as well. Is he a king class elite? Hansen asked. No. He is a duke from Rue Beast. His talent lies in suppress evil powers, so his suppress evil is, quite naturally, greater than that of others. There aren't many people that are as good as him when it comes to that skill. As a result, the elders generally allow him to lead discussions on suppress evil, Thousand Feather Crane said. In that case, I will talk about something else. Hansen was troubled now. He did not have an alternative he could think of teaching. 
Hansen had many Gino arts, but they were all secret. He shouldn't really be teaching those to others, and without them, he hadn't a clue of what he should lecture on. Brother Han, we will attend your lessons tomorrow. Before Thousand Feather Crane and the others left, they made plans to meet up with Han San at the training grounds the next day. Han Sen still didn't know what he should teach, though. He was planning to ask the Sky Palace people what they wished to hear about. When the students of Sky Palace heard that Han San was finally going to fulfill his teaching requirement, many people who weren't planning on going changed their minds. Even the feathers such as Angia came to listen. They wanted to see what Han San could teach them. Han San brought Bauer onto the stage alongside him. He saw many students down in front. There was quite the audience, and there weren't enough seats to house them all. Many people were relegated to standing. Han San and Lone Bamboo were referred to as the Knife and Sword Masters, and the residents of Sky Palace were very interested in Han Sen's Gino Arts. It wasn't just the lower level swords that had come to listen to Han Sen that day either, as many Marquises attended as well. Thousand Feather Crane and the Yoon sisters had managed to claim some front row seats for themselves. Han Sen nodded at them, as if he was saying hello. Since he was a teacher on stage, and it was a little inappropriate for him to greet others in such a fashion. Brother Han, what are you teaching? Yu Jing shouted boisterously from the front row. What would you like to hear about? If there is anything in particular, I will consider your requests, Hansen asked. He hoped someone in the audience would have a good idea. Sword skills. We want to hear about sword skills. Why sword skills? Knife skills for sure. Brother Han has been taught by two legends. Why don't you teach us both? since you are called the Knife and Sword Master. Many of the students started to fight amongst themselves. There were too many differing opinions, which wasn't helping Han Sen make a decision at all. I have a suggestion. If it is possible, do you think you could teach us suppress evil? Yu Jing's voice was so loud. His call managed to drown out all the others. What is the point of listening to that? We have heard about it too many times, and it is simply way too hard to practice. Many more students fought to have their say once again. Many students wished to practice suppress evil, but the technique really was notoriously difficult to become proficient with. It was a Gino art that took a very long time to learn. Studying it was almost too difficult. Suppress evil is a nice suggestion. As everyone was in the middle of arguing with each other, a cold voice resonated through the air. It wasn't loud, but everyone heard it. And to top it off, it was familiar. Everyone looked toward the voice, and the speaker was revealed to be none other than Lone Bamboo. He was standing at the edge of the hall. Yu Jing had looked rather embarrassed when everyone shouted down his suggestion, but now he was very excited and he said, Look, even Brother Lone Bamboo wants to hear about suppress evil. I would like to let Brother Han teach us about suppress evil, too. Yep, suppress evil sounds good. I have heard many lectures concerning suppress evil. If it is coming from Brother Han, however, it must be unique. Let us all now listen to Suppress Evil. Even Brother Lone Bamboo wishes to hear about Han Sen's Suppress Evil. It must be very different. Let's do it. The students that were all arguing now suddenly agreed with each other. They wished to hear about Han Sen's Suppress Evil. After the nightmares, Lone Bamboo never came to the training grounds to listen to the lectures. Now that Lone Bamboo was there to listen to Han Sen's Suppress Evil, Everyone thought that Han Sen's suppress evil had to be something special. They really wanted to hear about it now. Seeing everyone clamoring to hear about suppress evil, Han Sen found himself quietly saying, Okay, I will teach. Suppress evil. But my proficiency with it is nothing special. Just listen and do not take it too seriously. What I'm about to say is just some advice. Suppress evil? This is both the best and worst Gino art to consider teaching. Sky Path Garden's leader squinted his eyes and looked over the training ground. Leader, why do you say that? White Real asked. The leader smiled and said, Suppress evil is difficult. There are many meanings to glean from the 30 million words contained in its text. It could easily take an entire year to explain a single paragraph. Many people that have practiced it can teach it, but it's hard because of the sheer breadth of the technique. Talking about one paragraph hardly helps anyone so the students aren't likely to learn much. After pausing, he went on to say, The same is true with Four Season Duke from Rue Beast. He teaches suppress evil, and he has been learning it for centuries. And even with all that talent, 
he has only managed to reach its eighth tier. The Sky Palace leader has managed to fulfill all eleven tiers, but he is the only one that has. Only he has been able to do that? There has never been another? White Real asked. Others have done it, but they are few. Aside from the leader, there is one other who occupied the first elder seat. He has been gone for a long time, though. No one knows whether or not he still lives, the leader said. Thousand Feather Crane and the Yoon sisters, upon hearing that Han San had been forced to teach suppress evil, looked worried. They had just reminded Han San not to do this, since Four Season Duke usually taught it. He lectured on suppress evil every month, and according to his timetable, he would be there teaching again the next day. If Han Sen's speech on suppress evil was terrible, then the next day, when Four Season Duke taught it, people were going to openly proclaim the Duke to be superior. It wouldn't do much damage to Han Sen's reputation in the long run, but it'd still look bad. But if Han Sen did well enough to embarrass Four Season Duke, that wouldn't be great either. It was bad to offend a Duke. So, it did not matter if he taught suppress evil with a high proficiency or a low proficiency. He was doomed, either way. That was why they had explicitly told Han San to avoid teaching suppress evil. Now that Yu Jing and Lone Bamboo had come forward to request it in particular, Han San had no choice but to comply though. Han San didn't bother worrying about it. He didn't know what else he could teach, and he had at least prepared a little with suppress evil. So, lackadaisically, he was just going to go forward with that. The suppress evil Han San had learned was different from the teachings the average student received with it, however. Ordinary students were required to reach King class before being given access to Hidden Path Cave and observing the 72 gene kill spells. Before that, their teachings were relegated to the pages of books. But Han Sin had already observed the 72 gene skill spells, and by following those, he learned it with a great deal of proficiency. So, Han Sin had already established the basics and continued on. Because his audience had studied the skill in such a radically different way, their opinions on the teachings could be wildly different. Han Sun wasn't planning on teaching in a conventional method, however. He had another way to go about this. If everyone wishes to hear about suppress evil, I will discuss it and recount my own experiences. Today, I will talk to you all about the Gold Star Punch, one of the 72 suppress evil punches, Han Sun said. Brother Han, what is a suppress evil punch? We haven't encountered anything like that in our learnings of suppress evil, Yu Jing asked. Han Sen's first sentence made many people very curious. Suppress evil was a very complex geno art, and its power was very unique. The power that fueled it came from within, but it did not correlate with the physical capabilities of your actual body. Basically, suppress evil was similar in some ways to the purple eye godlights. It was a special power that was used independently rather than being combined with some sort of physical strike. But because Hansen had studied the original gene kill spells, he knew a lot about how the skill could actually be used. Rather than spending forever talking about the individual elements of the skill, Hansen was going to start with the finished product, in this case, a punch. Then, the students could reverse engineer their understanding of the skill from the feelings that the finished product gave them. Other teachers could take the time to teach about the nitty-gritty details, Hansen figured. He wasn't going to do that. He was going to talk about a basic punch that stemmed from the original gene kill spells, and through that punch, the students would learn about the technique at large. Normal people wouldn't understand this, but if they practiced the skill and could get to grips with the sensation of the punch, they would understand the meaning of the original gene kill spells. Practice makes perfect. Do something over and over, and you're bound to get better. Hansen was well acquainted with this basic method. But being basic didn't mean that it was a bad method. Ordinary students weren't like Four Season Duke, who had all the time in the world to learn about suppress evil. If they wanted to learn it properly, Four Season Duke's method might take their entire lifetime. So, Hansen's basic method was for the students that did not have as much time to learn suppress evil. If the students wished to learn suppress evil, learning a suppress evil punch would be good. None of them had seen an original gene kill spell before. But if they practiced and researched it like this, then the entire process was sure to be faster. The only bad thing about a suppress evil punch was the limit that Hansen himself imposed. Even if the students learned the skills as well as Hansen, they could only be as good as Han Senator they couldn't go any further. But for most ordinary people, that was enough. 
Han Sin's suppress evil was at tier 8. If they mastered the punch, they would be equal to the 8th tier of suppress evil as well. For season Duke had practiced suppress evil for centuries, and he hadn't gone any farther than 8 tiers either. A suppress evil punch is a fist technique that I learned from suppress evil. Suppress evil is too big to teach in its entirety, so I will teach you all about a specific technique. I hope this can help everyone further their practices with suppress evil, Han Sun said as an introduction. Everyone was interested. They had never heard suppress evil being spoken of in such a way. It was like they were having a chemistry lesson, and the topic of the day was punches. The two things didn't really make much sense when combined. There didn't seem to be a relation between the two, but it still sparked much curiosity. If there are no questions, I will teach you all the first technique. It is named Gold Star Punch, and it stems from the 72 suppress evil punches. Han Sen taught them his fist skill. This skill was not particularly difficult. It was just like any fist skill. It took the shape of the original gene kill spells and that was that. However, it had a great deal of depth. In order to master it, a student would have to understand the original gene kill spells inside and out. Han San wanted to teach sword skills, but so many Sky Palace students used swords that there was already a flood of sword skills. He settled on punches instead. Four Season Duke went to the training ground as he usually did, and there, he prepared to start teaching Suppress Evil. But after waiting a while to begin, he noticed there were only a few people in attendance. This made him frown. Although the training ground wasn't usually packed, the seats in his lectures were usually around 90% filled. After all, quite a few students had learned Suppress Evil in Sky Palace, and when they had trouble improving their proficiency with it, Many would come to hear what Four Season Duke had to say. This was the first time the place had ever been so empty. Luan, why have only a few of you come? Where is Chu Hao? For Season Duke asked, as he looked over the handful of students. Luan and Chu Hao focused on suppress evil more than any others. They always appeared in the lessons given by Four Season Duke. There, attending another teacher's lesson, Luan spoke with nervousness and guilty reluctance. I see. And which teacher are they studying under? Four Season Duke focused on suppress evil. He didn't care about anything else, so he didn't pay much attention to the other instructors. They have gone to listen to Han Sin, Luan answered. Han Sin. What does he teach? For Season Duke asked with much curiosity. Even he had heard Han Sin's name before. He teaches. Luan was struggling to spit out the words. What's wrong with your mouth? Why do you keep stumbling? What does he teach? Four Season Duke frowned. He is teaching suppress evil, Luan finally stated. Suppress evil? Four Season Duke's frown was a deep one. But after a moment, his expression relaxed again. Hansen hadn't been in Sky Palace for very long. Even if he had started learning suppress evil the day he arrived, there was no way he could have achieved much with it. If the students were listening to Hansen, Four Season Duke concluded that it was just because of Han Sen's celebrity status. He was the freshest kid on the block. After the students heard a lecture or two from Han Sen, they would quickly recognize which of the two teachers were better at suppress evil, and they'd be eager to return. All right, let's start. Today, we are going to talk about the theory of suppress evil. Four Season Duke started his lesson. For Season Duke thought that, after a couple of days, that freshness would wear off and his old students would start flocking back to him. But a few more days after that, the students hadn't come back. Even more had chosen to abandon him, as a matter of fact. Aside from a few students that he had personally trained, all the others were gone. Now Four Season Duke started to feel upset. There were only a few students in front of the stage now, and so he couldn't help but frown and say, I am not teaching today. Let's go listen to Han San and see what is attracting everyone to his lectures. Four Season Duke left the stage and headed toward Han San's lecture. Luan and the others followed. Not long after, Four Season Duke arrived at Han San's training ground. When he walked inside, Four Season Duke turned to ask Luan, Luan, is he really talking about suppress evil? It was not surprising that Four Season Duke had to ask this. In the training grounds, everyone had their sleeves rolled up. They appeared to be practicing punches. To Four Season Duke, it looked like Han Sin was teaching a simple punching skill. He found it hard to believe what was being taught was actually suppress evil. Um, he is teaching suppress evil. 
Hansen said that this is a suppress evil punch. You will learn the skill if you learn the punch, Wan explained. What a load of nonsense. What does a firm punch have to do with suppress evil? Four season Duke frowned. He wasn't a rash person, though, so he didn't do anything. He planned to listen to Han San and figure out a smarter way in which he could fight back. Four season Duke had researched and studied suppress evil for a number of centuries. He was a very patient man, so he wouldn't do anything impulsive or stupid. He found a place to sit down, and he waited there to listen to Han San. The students that practiced suppress evil all knew who Four Season Duke was. Seeing him there, sitting and listening quietly, they all knew things were about to get interesting. Four Season Duke is here. Oh, Han Sen is in trouble now. Will something happen? Perhaps not. They might bicker, but that's about it. To be honest, Four Season Duke is a very high level person. But if I am going to learn, following Han Sen would be the easier route. Yeah. Hansen's method of teaching is such a breath of fresh air. It is easy to learn and use. You are right. After learning suppress evil punch from him, I can see things clearly that I used to have no hope of understanding. The students spoke quietly amongst themselves, but with the power four season Duke possessed, he could hear them as clear as a bell. He frowned even harder than he had been, and he wondered to himself, can the practice of a punch really connect with suppress evil? A few minutes later, Hansen arrived and started his lesson. Hansen was not aware that Four Season Duke was there. He had grown comfortable with the lessons and with the crowds that attended, so he didn't keep an eye on each and every person who came to listen. He did allow them to ask questions once the lesson was over, however. Today, we talk about the Xiong Star Punch from the 72 Suppress Evil Punches. Hansen started the lesson by talking rather than demonstrating. That wasn't because it was a secret though. It was just pointless to demonstrate this early. The students had to work out the execution for themselves. Han Sen would show them only if they ran into trouble. That was how it worked. Showing people a fist skill, when they had never learned it before, was pointless. It would be like they were watching a show. For season Duke wanted to argue with Han Sen as soon as he began lecturing, but after the Duke listened for a while, his jaw went slack. Han Sen's fist skill was simple, but it had the meaning of suppress evil within it. It all sounded as if it made perfect sense. For Season Duke was not reckless. Before he figured out anything more, he decided to just listen. Over the next few days, Four Season Duke attended each of Han Sen's lessons. When the lecture ended, Four Season Duke left without saying anything. That was, until the last day of Han Sen's lessons. All Han Sen did was walk on stage, and before he could do anything, Four Season Duke stood up. All the students were surprised, knowing something was finally about to go down. Over the course of the past few days, in which Four Season Duke attended the lectures given by Han Sin, he had selected a seat closer and closer to the stage each time. And on this day, he had snagged himself a front row seat. When he stood up, everyone turned to look at him. Thousand Feather Crane and the Yoon sisters were profusely worried, hoping nothing awful was going to happen. Han San had noticed Four Season Duke's presence two days prior to this confrontation, but he hadn't paid the man a second's heed. Now that Four Season Duke was standing up, though, Han Sin gave the man his full attention. Teacher Han, I have listened to your lessons on suppress evil punches over the past few days, and I must confess, I have learned a lot. That being said, I have questions concerning your techniques. Perhaps you can perform a punch for me, and then answer a few questions I have? For Season Duke spoke with a guise of complete sincerity. After that, many students seemed to freeze in place. Thousand Feather Crane and the Yoon sisters stared at Four Season Duke as if they had just seen a ghost. For Season Duke wasn't mocking him, though. Based on the way he referred to Han San as Teacher Han, he wasn't pretending to be in awe of Han Senator, he was speaking as a teacher to appear. Because of Four Season Duke's rank, the fact that he referred to Han San as a teacher was a seal of his approval. It was to show that he actually had some respect for Han Senator since he was a duke while Han San was still a marquise, he could have just referred to Han San by his full name and not by the title. Many of the Sky Palace students, seeing Four Season Duke ask so sincerely, thought they were dreaming. With Four Season Duke's rank and fame, it was impressive for him to make a request of Han San. After Four Season Duke left Han Sen's lectures every day, 
He had started practicing when he went home. He was a professional with suppress evil, and he knew more about the skill than ordinary people. Because of that, he could see deeper into the essence of the suppress evil punches. After a few days of avid research, Four Season Duke learned many things he had not noticed before. And that had brought him to actually admire Han Sen. Since this was the final day of Han Sen's lessons, he couldn't stop himself from requesting that Han Sen perform the punch himself. He wanted to know the feelings that could be elicited from Han Sen's performance of a suppress evil punch. People couldn't blame him for wanting to know this, of course. He was a duke. He could not go to the hidden path cave himself to look at the 72 original gene kill spells. If he was able to understand the feelings of the kill spells from a suppress evil punch, it'd be great for his own practice and further advancement. Ah, uh, you are too polite. If you are interested in my lame talents, then I will perform them for you. If I can't improve, please advise me on what I could do to better myself. Hansen had planned to show off the punch on the last day. Anyway, this way, he could do Four Season Duke a favor as well. For Season Duke was happy to hear this, and so he said, No, I only want to learn from you. I have no ulterior motive. Hansen said no more. He simply nodded. He went on stage and said, In ten days, I have taught six punches. Today, I will demonstrate them for you. Please observe. Perhaps they can be of assistance to you. After that, Han Sen began casting Ghost Star Punch. Then, he performed the skills one after another. Han Sen had learned 72 suppress evil punches following the 72 original gene kill spells. Every punch carried the meaning of a kill spell. As Han Sen performed the six that he had promised, it felt as if the kill spell had come alive. The killer gave people a frightful chill. That feeling disturbed their minds. Even, whenever Han Sen launched a punch, he was like a beast breaking a river. One skill had one meaning. Hansen showed six punching skills to them. It was like six scary beasts trying to suppress the earth itself. In people's eyes, Hansen was no longer a human. He was six wild beasts. The Sky Palace students were jittery with excitement by the time he finished. For Season Duke looked as if he was drunk. For when Hansen finished his performance, the Duke was totally frozen in place. It was like he had been drowned in the feelings of the fist techniques. So that was Teacher Han's six fist technique. That must have saved me sixty years of practice. I am lucky. Four Season Duke bowed before Han Sen. Four Season Duke, you are too kind. Han Sen bowed back. After that, the suppress evil punch became famous across all of Sky Palace. It was taken to the Sky Path Garden, and it was modified. It swiftly became one of the must-have skills of Sky Palace. Han Sen's reputation was glowing even brighter than before. And because he had created the suppress evil punch, he was handsomely rewarded. After that, Four Season Duke regularly visited Jade Island to practice suppress evil alongside Han Senator Han Sen, taught him the 72 suppress evil punches, and Han Sen was able to learn much about suppress evil from Four Season Duke as well. Han Sen's suppress evil punch was a very efficient method. It allowed students to learn suppress evil fast, but if someone wanted to master the skill, they would need the experience someone like Four Season Duke had. Han Sen learned a great deal from Four Season Duke, and he grew to really admire the man. This was a teacher that did true research the hard way. He was genuinely worthy of all that respect. Four Season Duke admired Han Sen's suppress evil punch, too. Whenever he taught suppress evil, he began using suppress evil punches to allow his students to understand things easier. Does Hansen ever do things that are boring or mundane? He is a wonder with everything he does. When the Sky Palace leader said this, he smiled. Only kings can go into Hidden Path Cave. When visiting the 72 original gene kill spells, they can become half deified. No one is interested in it after this, and if they fail, they cannot perform the 72 punching skills as well as Hansen, either. Only Hansen can do what he does. He made suppress evil easier to learn. Though, the students don't need to spend as much time studying it. While it may be considered as corner cutting, it's undeniably a good method. The black masked woman went on to say, And I heard that when Lone Bamboo saw Han Sen suppress evil punch, he requested his own visit to Hidden Path Cave? That is surprising. Sky Palace leader nodded, and he said, Lone Bamboo has been there for half a month. He won't be back for another year, I suspect. But there is trouble on Metal World. 
The masked woman had a wry smile. If we knew that we were on the cusp of discovering Metal World, we wouldn't have allowed Lone Bamboo to enter just yet. Now that he is focusing on the cave, it is not suitable to disrupt him and send him to Metal World. I can't think of a Marquise aside from Lone Bamboo that can do this task for us, Sky Palace leader said. The masked woman laughed and said, If Hansen is the reason Lone Bamboo went into the hidden path cave, then Hansen should be the one to do what Lone Bamboo was supposed to. We should have him go to Metal World. That's not a good idea. He isn't a Marquise yet, the Sky Palace leader said with a shake of his head. And yet, he even killed Dragon Nine? You can use him as a Marquise and he needs the resources. This is a perfectly viable opportunity. The masked woman laughed again. Han San thought he would have a few days free to himself, but soon after he finished his lectures, he was summoned by the elders. There, he was tasked with leading a team to a newly discovered xenogenic space. He was instructed to explore the space, and if possible, return with resources and materials. Because the xenogenic space only allowed Marquises to enter, Lone Bamboo had been intended to lead the task force there. But right now, he was training inside Hidden Path Cave. As a result, the elders saw fit to pass the job on to Han Senator Hansen was given a basic description of the Xenogenic space, which was called Metal World. This was, however, only a temporary name for the location. He did learn that more than one faction had already discovered it, though. Other teams were already there, researching the place. Sky Palace was a step behind. Based on what he was told, there were groups from the Dragon, Demon, Destroyed, and even the Buddha there. They were all in the Metal World, and now that Sky Palace had joined the exploration, the situation was sure to become quite complex. Han Sen did not have much time to prepare before being shipped off, as he was led by a Sky Palace elder. He was accompanied by 100 Sky Palace Marquee students, as well. The trip to Metal World had been organized by the elders. The Marquises had been instructed to follow Han Sen's commands after they entered Metal World, so their lives were pretty much in his hands. Although Han Sen was just an earl, Sky Palace's authority was well respected among its members, and Han Sen's own reputation was mighty. No one objected to Han Sen's position as their leader. Before entering Metal World, the elder provided Han San with a bounty of information about the Marquis students he was set to lead. A few of them had been marked, as they had unique powers that would be crucial for the trip ahead. Han San led the 100 Sky Palace Marquises to Metal World. That xenogenic space was a planet, and a strange power radiated from it. That power forbade the entry of any creature or being that was above the Marquis level. The scariest thing about all this was that the planet had a very special magnetic property. Metal objects would be sucked into the planet, so tools made of metal were unusable in the planet's vicinity. Due to this, airships could not come close to the planet. When the planet was viewed from the exterior, it seemed to be entirely shrouded in wild magnetic storms. The whole planet was cloaked in a swirl of thunderclouds. When Han San and the others pierced through the clouds, a most colorful planet came into sight. When they got close enough to see it all, however, they swiftly understood why the place had been given the title of Metal World. The mountains and plains there were all metal. Seeing topographical features made of metal was a little odd, but the really strange thing was the metallic nature of all the animals and plants. Everything on the planet's surface was metal, and it was a very surreal thing to lay eyes on. Brother Yuya, where are we to begin our search? Hansen asked politely, looking at the Marquis student. Yuya was a highly regarded Marquis of Sky Palace. Second only to Lone Bamboo, he was certainly the strongest of Han Sen's companions. He was always at the forefront of exploring new xenogenic spaces for Sky Palace, as well. He had a lot of experience with these sorts of endeavors. Yuya looked over the planet's surface, then spoke to Han Sr. We don't know where the other races have set up operations but they are sure to have seen us as we came in. So, exploring the planet is not our primary objective. Finding those other races, or finding a safe zone to establish a place of respite, should be our first priority. Brother Yuya, you are correct. I was being reckless. Where should we camp? What do you think would be the safest place for us? Hansen asked. Seeing that Hansen was really interested in the opinions of others, Yuya pointed out a marquise to Han Sr., you might want to ask Brother Yuni. He is good at this sort of thing. Brother Yuni, please. 
Han Sun knew these matters should be handled by the professionals. Sky Palace might have sent him there to lead, but leading meant using his forces effectively, not doing everything himself like some kind of hero. It was his job to learn his team's strengths and put them to good use. There were so many unknown factors about Metal World. He'd be able to escape if he ran into trouble, but he couldn't go back with 100 Marquises dead. And the other factions would be dangerous. They could have certainly established traps and ambushes. The enemy had been there for a while, and they had been given the opportunity to learn about the Xenogenic space. They might use their head start to trick Han Sen's party. As Han Sen's team set to work, he quickly learned that there were many geniuses in Sky Palace. They were so good at everything, and they were quick to establish a camp on Metal World and start exploring the surrounding area. They also built an alarm system and emergency contingencies for all sorts of situations. But what surprised Han Sun the most was his team's dedication. They researched and cataloged everything within a hundred miles. Aside from a few metal animals and plants, however, there was no sign of xenogenics. They didn't see any of the Marquises sent by the other races, either. There was no day and night cycle on the planet, and the environment wasn't very friendly to life. But the Sky Palace team were all Marquises, so a poor environment would not bring them down. The magnetic storms in the sky continued to rage. Blue lightning flashed through the sky continuously, lighting up the planet's surface better than a normal sun. Han Sen, Yuya, and the other Marquises were talking about expanding their exploration when the magnetic storm suddenly changed color. The blue magnetic storm turned a beautiful shade of pink. Young, 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 young. Suddenly, a loud noise began to ring in their ears. The metal forest nearby began to shake like it was suffering an earthquake. Not long after, a 10-meter-tall metal rhino appeared out of the metal forest, and it was not alone. Many more followed after, and before long, a thousand of them had come storming out of the trees. They were headed to a nearby river that looked like Mercury. Han San was happy he had listened to Yuni and avoided setting up camp near the river. If they had, the rhinos could have stampeded right over them. Those metal rhinos looked powerful. The team couldn't determine how strong the creatures were, but in that unknown land, fighting them did not seem like a bright idea. Yuni was looking at the metal rhinos when he said, They are like living hunks of metal. Judging by their life force, I can estimate that they are at least marquees in strength. I don't know if they are xenogenics, but they don't seem to be too smart. Weird. We didn't catch sight of them in any of our explorations. Where did they come from? White Reel, who had also come on the trip, frowned in confusion. The host of metal rhinos moved down to the riverbank. They eventually walked into the stream and began playing in the water that looked a lot like mercury. They had great, hulking metal bodies. They looked like they were made from rough, dull steel, and their bodies were a stark contrast to the glimmering Silver River. Hansen didn't know what the silver liquid in the river was, but it was most certainly not water. The metal rhinos drank the silver liquid freely, though, so there was a small chance that the liquid was harmless. While the rhinos drank and played, a rumbling noise began to come from the forest. Many more metal creatures came down from the mountains and emerged from the forests. They all went straight for the river, and when they reached it, they began to drink from it. There were metal snakes that had to have been at least 100 meters long. There were silver-colored lions and centipedes with a seemingly infinite number of legs. There was a great variety of metallic creatures, all headed for the river with an insatiable thirst. The metal creatures looked very scary. At first glance, they appeared to be Duke or even King-class monsters. For some reason, though, there didn't seem to be any hostility between the various creatures. Many low-level metal creatures came forward to drink the silver liquid alongside the more powerful ones. The metal creatures sure seem very friendly, White Reel said with curiosity. Perhaps not. Yuya summoned a pigeon-like xenogeneic. It came out of his sleeve and flew towards the river. The bird xenogeneic obviously wasn't a creature that was native to Metal World. A bronze body suddenly soared through the sky. The creature was shaped something like a dragonfly, but it was made completely of bronze. Its body was at least five meters long, and its bulging eyes and mandibles made it look monstrous. The bronze body flew past the river, and it snapped up the bird xenogeneic that Yuya had released. 
It gobbled up the bird with just a few seconds of chewing, feathers, and all. Everyone was frozen, and Yuya felt compelled to say, It looks like they are only friendly to other creatures that are native to Metal World. Outsiders don't receive the same treatment. Han Sin Nu did. Now, he really admired Yuni. The creatures had crossed over mountains and traversed forests to get there from all around. But the minor place Yuni had selected for camp was absent of creatures. Even if creatures did come close to their safe zone, they could fall back into their cave and remain hidden. No one would be able to find them there. It was a solid spot to establish camp. Because there were too many powerful metal creatures nearby, Han San set up a rota of shifts for the men to keep an eye on those creatures. For now, no one was to travel. Ten hours later, some of the metal creatures were still occupying the river. The beasts kept coming and going. It seemed as if it might have been the only river on the planet, and as a result, everyone would eventually swing by to drink from it. Captain Han, come and take a look at this. Han San was resting when Yuya suddenly called him. Han Sen got up and followed Yuya to the mouth of the cave and peered cautiously outside. The metal creatures that were near the river were starting to look nervous. They began staying out of the liquid, visibly fearful of something. Han Sen waited and watched a while, until eventually, a white metal beast approached the river. Whenever the other creatures saw it draw near, they avoided it. None were keen to step in its way. Han Sen observed the white metal beast. It did not look very big, probably about two meters long. But it was white and looked like a mammoth. That metal mammoth went right into the river and began sucking up the silvery liquid with its snout. The other metal creatures made sure to stay far away from the mammoth, all of them keeping a vigilant eye on the beast. It looked as if they didn't dare drink the liquid while the mammoth did. They waited until the mammoth was satisfied and left the area. When it was gone, the average metal creatures returned to the river and resumed drinking. Seeing that mammoth walk back into the metal forest, Han Sen and Yuya looked at each other and sighed. When the mammoth appeared, they did not dare to even breathe. The last thing they wanted was for that thing to find them. The mammoth was very powerful. A marquise wouldn't be able to deal with such a fiend. It looks like our situation is not very favorable. Only marquises can enter this place. And yet some of the creatures here are king class? One mistake could leave all of us dead, Yuya said. Yuni nodded and said, Those of the other races might be in hiding as well. We can wait for now. But it does seem as if the metal creatures only emerge when the sky turns pink. Perhaps when the magnetic storm returns to blue, the creatures will all disappear again. Han Sen and the others thought that made perfect sense. There was no need to rush their operation, either. They had to take their time and figure things out, first and foremost. They set up a series of shifts for watching the river. Over the course of time, many different types of metal creatures came to drink from the river. There were other scary things like the mammoth, as well, which was quite worrying for Han Sen's team. After 80 hours, the stream of metal creatures visiting the river began to slow. And before long, the pink magnetic storm began to change. An hour later, the lightning flashing across the sky returned to blue. Things looked normal again. Finally, the Marquises concluded that there were no more metal creatures coming to the river. Hansen sent out a few trackers to explore the area. The results were as expected, but it surprised them all the same. The metal creatures that had appeared near the river were now all gone. It was as if they had just vanished. Oh no, have they turned invisible? Or are they just hiding away someplace underground? White Real asked with a strange look. Yuya did not speak. They were all deep in thought. The metal world was strange, and they couldn't come to much of a conclusion until they learned a lot more. While Hansen and the others were thinking, someone approached them from the direction of the mountain. When he reached the perimeter they had established, he called out to them. I am Khan of the Demon. Is your group from Sky Palace? Hansen looked around carefully, but the only person he could see was Khan. He went forward to speak to the felon, taking Yuya with him. Khan? What are you doing here? You are the leader of this team, Hansen? Great. Since we're already friends, we can cooperate. Khan laughed. I don't recall us ever having much in the way of cooperation, Hansen responded coldly. To be honest, I don't recall being chummy with you, either. But right now, the dragon, Buddha, and Destroyed are all working together. 
If we don't form some sort of alliance, they might come after us in this dangerous place. As he spoke, Khan's shoulders slumped. Why should I believe you? Hansen did not move. We arrived here long before you did. I think you'll be interested in the information I possess. Khan smiled. Hansen let Khan into the camp so they could continue their discussion. Khan spoke without preamble. You might not believe me when I tell you this, but we are all trapped on this world. What do you mean? Hansen asked with a frown. Well, since you've entered Metal World, have you tried contacting anyone outside it? Khan said. Hansen and Yuya looked at each other. Then, they looked back at Khan without responding. Khan sighed and said, It is good that you haven't. I advise that you don't try it. Two demon Marquises tried to leave, but they died doing so. The same thing happened to some of the Buddha, Dragon, and Destroyed. No one can leave this planet. If you do not believe me, you can go ahead and try to leave. But don't blame me for not warning you. How are those that leave killed? Yuni asked. They fell to their deaths, Khan said, his voice clipped. Fell to their deaths? Hansen and the others frowned. Have you ever played with a rubber band? The further you pull, the harder it hits when released. When you enter this planet, your body becomes bound by the rules of it. If you fly above the surface, you will feel a power trying to drag you back down. The higher you fly, though, the stronger it gets. Eventually, even the strongest are thrown back to their doom, Khan said. Isn't what you're describing just gravity? Why must you make it sound so complicated? White Reel said. Khan shook his head. It is not gravity. Gravity gets weaker the farther you get from a planet, but this force grows stronger with distance. And when the planet finally overcomes your resistance and drags you back, you end up hitting the ground at mind-blowing velocities. No Marquis's body can withstand it. How high can you fly before this power appears? Hansen asked. 10,000 meters, Khan answered quickly. Ade. Yuya looked over to a strong beast Marquis. That lion-like Marquis answered by leaping with its powerful legs and taking off into the sky. He reached a height of 10,000 meters in a short amount of time. When it passed 10,000 meters, the lion Marquis slowed to a crawl. It continued flying higher, but its pace was excruciatingly slow. It struggled for some time, and when it reached a height of 13,000 meters, it stopped completely. Ade, come back! Yuya shouted. Ade started to follow the command, but before he could turn around, a scary power launched him back down to the ground. Pang. Aid's body was like a meteor descending. He struck the metal surface at a frightening speed, and a massive crater was formed upon the crash. Hansen and the others immediately ran over to him. Aid's body was completely broken, like a mashed cake. Ade roared. A holy light covered his body, and then he was back to normal. Now we can talk about this properly, right? Khan smiled. They returned to camp and began discussing the terms of cooperation. They struck a deal. In the meantime, Khan explained more of how the planet had been found. The demon and the Buddha were the first ones to discover Metal World. A battle had drawn them into that rarely traveled region of space, and as they fought, they stumbled across the hidden planet. The two races sent people to explore Metal World, but somehow, news of the planet was leaked to the airwaves. The dragon, the destroyed, and Sky Palace received word of their discovery. It was only after the Marquises landed on the planet that they realized how dangerous the place was. And it was also then that they discovered they were unable to leave. The dragon, the destroyed, and the Buddha quickly formed an alliance. They killed almost all of the demons that Khan had brought to the planet. So when Khan caught sight of the Sky Palace people arriving, he came to them in the hope of receiving their help. Yuya looked at Khan and coldly said, the news about this place was released because you found out something was wrong, right? You lured other races here. That is why the dragon and the destroyed grouped up with the Buddha to fight you, wasn't it? Khan sighed and said, I have been here this entire time, haven't I? I haven't been able to contact the outside world. I don't know if it was a demon that leaked the news. After that, Khan laughed and said, even if we were the ones who leaked the news, it shouldn't have any impact on our cooperation. Why would we join you, anyway? The dragon would be a much better choice, Hansen asked calmly. Khan seemed ready for Hansen to say this, 
and so he smiled. When they formed their alliance, it gave them an advantage. But they won't share anything with you. They'll want to keep the benefits for themselves. What benefits? Hansen asked, zeroing in on the key point of what Khan had said. If the other races were trapped, their best choice should have been to coordinate their efforts to search for an exit. But instead, they had attacked the demon. It seems as if there was something more going on that Khan wasn't quite willing to reveal. The first two teams to arrive found some old ruins on the planet. The ruins might have been left by a deified elite. Now, those three races are guarding it. If we work together, we might be able to beat them and nab the loot for ourselves. Sky Palace is strong, but you cannot fight all three by yourselves, Khan said with certainty. Khan provided them with more intel on the location and disposition of the ruins, and Han Sun sent someone to verify Khan's story. Khan wasn't willing to give out too much information, though. He smiled and said, We demon and the Buddha discovered the ruin at the same time. We know as much as they do. There is no harm in us forming an alliance with you, is there? Hansen and Yuya held a brief discussion. They both agreed that an alliance was a good idea, so Hansen left the details of the operation to Yuni and Yuya. They were better than Hansen at that sort of thing. We have to move while the blue storm is raging and the metal creatures are hidden. Once we are in the ruins, we will be safe. We won't get attacked by the creatures, Khan explained, clearly wanting them to move quickly. And on the way, they'd meet up with the rest of the demon. Khan had many secrets he could not reveal, but most of his information was legit, and it saved Han Sen a whole bunch of time. And if the dragon attacked them while they were in the ruins, teaming up with the demon could save their lives. They confirmed the blue storm's duration and the ruins' location, and then they set out. They met up with the other demons and continued on. The demons were in terrible shape. They were wearier than Hansen had imagined. Aside from Khan, there were only 20 Marquises remaining, and all of them were injured. A giant city was nestled into the slopes of a metal mountain. The city was made of the same black metal as the mountain, and it looked like it had been carved from the mountain rather than built. When viewed from afar, the city and mountain blended together until it was impossible to tell where one ended and the other began. Two metal peaks that were 1,000 meters tall formed the gateposts of that massive city. The two enormous doors made those that passed between them feel like ants. From far away, Han San could see that the title on the gate read, Metal Giant God City. It was written in a language Han San had seen in the Geno universe before, but the words themselves looked so powerful that it was easy to imagine them leaping to life and sundering the skies of the world. Seeing that giant city, crouching on the mountain like a beast, Han Sin frowned and said, This city is so big. Not even the largest races I have seen would require the sort of space this place provides. Khan spoke in a hushed tone. Long ago, the giants were one of the ten higher races. They were part of a group called the Break Skies. The Break Skies had difficulty breeding, and their population gradually decreased until they became extinct, aside from a few who interbred with other races. We believe that this city is a deified location that once belonged to the Break Skies. After a pause, Khan resumed his dialogue. After entering the city, we unearthed some texts that made mention of the Break Skies. The carvings revealed that this place was a Break Sky city, but at some point, there was a battle that brought the city to ruin. Oddly, while we were in the city, we discovered no remains or corpses. Since the main gate was shut and no one had been able to open it, Khan led them to the left side of the city where there was a broken wall. Without that broken wall, it seemed unlikely that anyone would have made it inside. Entering from above would doubtlessly have its own challenges. The creatures that had built this city would have safeguarded against that. When they crossed over the wall, Han San noticed a few camps on the other side. The camps looked as if they belonged to other races, and indeed they did. Quite obviously, they belonged to the Buddha, Dragon, and Destroyed. It was odd that the other races hadn't placed any guards at the city's broken wall. There was no sign of anyone being around, actually. That's weird. It looks like they're not here anymore. Or is this some kind of trap? White Real looked at the camp with concern. Odds and ends were strewn about the camp. It didn't seem like there had been a fight, but it looked as if people had made a quick getaway. This is not a trap. There really is no one here, Yuya said. Hansen took his team into the camp to have a look around. When they determined that the other teams really were gone, 
they began gathering up the numerous supplies and resources that the others had left behind. The unhappy campers had left quite the store of Geno fluid in their camp. It looks like they really did leave in a rush. They did not take the Geno fluid with them. Hansen looked at Khan. Khan understood Hansen, and he quietly said, When the demon first came here under the blue storm, we saw the dragon. They had vanished by the time the red storm ended, though. Perhaps they found something big, and they were too excited to pack up and head for the deeper recesses of the ruins. I wonder what could have made them break camp so quickly. Perhaps it wasn't that they discovered something. Perhaps something went awry, and whatever happened forced them to flee, Yuya said. It is possible, but we haven't seen signs of fighting, Khan mumbled, deep in thought. Then, he suddenly stopped. It wasn't just Khan, either. Everyone in the group grew pale as they looked back outside the city. A multitude of red eyes hovered in the skies outside the city. The eyes grew closer as they watched, revealing the bronze, dragonfly-like bodies of the creatures soaring through the air. They were five meters long, and a buzzing sound accompanied their flight that set Han Sen's teeth on edge. There were so many of them that the swarm seemed endless, and they were now headed for the broken wall. What is going on? This is the time of the blue storms. Why would metal xenogenic creatures appear at a time like this? Yuya looked at Khan. I don't know. We have never seen metal xenogenics under a blue storm before. And even during a red storm, they never approach the city. This isn't good. Let's run. Khan cried. Then, he led the demon further into the ruins. Han San and Yuya looked at each other. They took the Sky Palace people into the ruins, as well. Those dragonflies were as strong as Marquises, and their numbers were legion. They could be fought off, possibly, but not without a price being paid. It'd get dirty. Sky Palace and the demon Marquises headed for the shelter of the ruins together. Khan was leading, and he shouted as he ran. There is a palace up ahead. We can hide there. Hansen had already seen the building he was referring to. The palace was like a mountain itself. It was so large that Han San figured even the blind could probably see it. But the palace's gates were shut, and he didn't know if they could open them. I have been here before. There is a gap in the palace wall. We can slide through, get inside, and barricade the entrance. A bottleneck like that will be much easier to defend, Khan said, and then ran for the other side of the palace. Han San was emotionless throughout all this, but he led the Sky Palace students after Khan. Up ahead. He saw a giant cave. It was shaped like a fist, and it seemed that it had been punched into the metal wall. The metal xenogenics were coming fast, though. The teams had no time to hesitate as they slid through the wall. Han San and Yuya jerked the last of their people into the palace just as the dragonfly metal xenogenics buzzed toward them. The Marquises that guarded the cave entrance released their godlights, killing the two nearest metal xenogenics. Then a demon marquise summoned a giant shield to barricade the entrance. The metal xenogenics slammed into the shield repeatedly, but try as they might, it wasn't going to let them through. Han San quickly looked around the palace they had stumbled into. It appeared to be some sort of side room, but before he could examine it further, his attention was drawn to the bodies lying on the floor. The corpses were both dragons and Buddhas, and it looked as if they had died gruesome deaths. Their scales and skin had been stripped from their bodies, but strangely, their flesh was left whole. There was blood everywhere, though. The sight washed over the teams in a horrible chill. Even Hansen, who saw blood often, felt sick. Do you recognize these people of the Buddha and Dragon? Hansen asked Khan. The two had instructed their teams to stay away from the bodies. Khan examined the corpses, and after a while, he said, I think this Buddha is Marquis Grass. He's always had a pronounced limp, because his left leg is a little shorter than his right leg. Look, that has to be him. As for this dragon fellow, I believe he must be Dragon 123. His wings aren't as broad as the wings of the average dragon. These two were fine the last time I saw them, so whatever happened to them must have been rather recent. Han Sen looked at Yuya. Yuya was also looking at the bodies, and he said, Aside from their skin and their scales being stripped, there doesn't appear to be any other forms of injuries. Their muscles and skeletons are all intact, so it doesn't appear as if they were hit. At the same time, Yuya tapped his chin in thought. 
These guys were too strong to have been killed by being skinned. They must have taken internal injuries or something. Are you saying this was caused by some sort of power that can bypass the body's protection and deal damage within? I know Inyang Punch and Pierce Body can do what you have described, but from the way these bodies look, I don't think they were slain by either of those powers. Their bones would have incurred much damage and their muscles would have tom and bled if they were victims of those techniques, White Reel said, stepping carefully around the bodies. Yuya considered that. If it was not a geno art such as Pierce Body, it had to be something else that is just as invasive. Perhaps a small bug of some kind? That could very well be it, yes? White Reel nodded. In that case, we'll have to take a look inside their bodies and see. Khan signaled for one of his demon marquises to approach. His subordinate drew a knife and approached a Buddha corpse. Yuya stopped the demon marquise firmly, though. I think it would be unwise for us to meddle with their bodies. What if there is something in there? We might fall into the same predicament that these two did. Khan said, if something is inside them, then it doesn't seem to be dangerous as long as it remains inside the corpses. If we cut a body open and let it loose, things could go badly for us. I think we should just seal the bodies and ignore them, Yuya said. That's a bad idea. Khan shook his head. What do you think, Hansen? Do as Yuya has instructed, Hansen said. Fine. If that is your decision, then we will do things your way. But my people are not good at using sealing powers, Khan said, while opening his arms. Hansen no did. Yuya found a marquise that was good with sealing powers and had him create a bisema to encircle it. They very carefully avoided moving the body as the sphere of protection went up around it. Han San kept eyeing the plane room that they had entered. There was a door on one wall that opened into a hallway, but no one knew where it led. Yuni, can you determine anything about the layout of the palace? Han San looked at Yuni. I can try, but all I have is a hall to go on. It isn't very much. I need to get a better look at the place before I map it out, Yuni said. Yuya, you and some of the others should guard this place. I will go have a look around with Yuni, Han San told Yuya. That is far too dangerous. I should be the one to go with a few others, Yuya said. Han San refused to let Yuya come, but he did allow a few marquises that were decent at scouting to accompany them and map the trail. Han San was confident in his demon bug by Sima. Even if they encountered a king-class foe, they'd be fine. I will come along with you guys, Khan said. Sure. Han San gave him a nod. But before they could enter the hallway, the demon marquises that were barricading the room's entrance started to shout. There are xenogeneics higher than marquises attacking our shields. I cannot hold them off. Head for the hallway and block off the door of this room instead, Khan ordered quickly. They now had no choice but to move forward. Hansen, Yuni, and Yuya were up front. They moved towards the hallway alongside the rest of their Sky Palace teammates. Once everyone had entered the hallway, they slammed the door shut. It wasn't very well fortified, so they used sealing powers to reinforce the door and bolster its strength. As they did, a strange hissing sound came from within the room. It was fortunate that they had reinforced the door in time. The hallway led outside, where several paths wandered deeper into the city. Each path led to a palace. They took the right path, which seemed to head to the closest palace. The giant palace was very clean, and there was a giant metal statue standing in front of it. It seemed to depict an actual giant, but it somehow looked a bit different. When they reached the interior of the construct, they found the corpses of a vast number of dragons and Buddhas. This is weird. I thought there was an alliance between the three races here. Why have we only seen the corpses of the dragon and the Buddha? Where might the bodies of the destroyed be? Surely, they could not have all escaped successfully, Yuni said with visible confusion. It is strange. Khan nodded in agreement. He walked around the building before coming to a stop near a statue. Han Sin looked at the statue and felt a sense of foreboding. Katcha. As Han San observed the statue, he heard a crunching noise. The mouth of the statue suddenly opened, and when it did, red lantern eyes shone from deep within it. Formation. Han Sin commanded. Yuya released his powers and light swords flew out of his body. Each blade flew to hover over a Sky Palace member's head. Everyone stood motionlessly, allowing the light swords to touch their heads. 
Markings appeared on their foreheads, allowing Yuya's thoughts to be channeled into everyone through the sword marks. When they had just established their formation at Yuya's direction, the thing inside the statue decided to emerge. It was a metal spider. Its colors were black and white, and its eyes were like chunks of copper. The metal spider did not wait around. It immediately charged at the assembly. Behind it, an endless stream of spiders continued to skitter out of the statue. The whole hall was thrown into disarray. Khan commanded his demons to fight, but without Yuya's flawless coordination, they had no hope of being as effective as the Sky Palace team. Both sides were intently focused on protecting their own, as well. Han Sen and the others listened to Yuya's commands. They maintained a tight formation as they fought the spiders, and before long, they were killing the spiders in droves. When Han Sen saw Yuya's power in action, he thought about Ningyu. Ningyu was an exceptional commander, and his will had always been strong. With someone like that among Han Sen's forces, the entire team would be far more powerful. Xenogeneic Marquis Guardian Spider Hunted Xenogeneic Gene Found After Han Sen killed one of the metal spiders, a scream erupted from inside the statue. A red spider began scrambling out of the statue's mouth. The guardian spiders did not look as if they could spin silk, but the claws on the ends of their legs were sharper than any knife. Not even the armor of a Marquis fighter could withstand blows from those. When the red spider emerged from the statue's mouth, it flew towards the battlers in an instant. Six of its blade-like appendages came swiping down towards the intruders. Yuya commanded the fighters to split up and scatter a little, and once clear of the spider's attack, they closed back in to surround the arachnid. They lifted their swords and struck the spider in perfect sync, but it was to no avail, as their swords simply bounced off with a loud clanging noise. They couldn't even scratch its body. That big guy has to be a duke. Yuni shouted. Yuya nodded in agreement, then drew his own sword. Yuni then ordered all of the Sky Palace students to strike a single spot on the spider. All their powers came against the creature like a rapid river. The target they had selected was its mouth. They managed to break its jaw, and when that occurred, the spider fell to the ground. After a few more attacks, Han San and the others managed to bring an end to the wicked fiend. Because of their formation, however, Han San was unable to get in the last hit. After the red spider died, no more guardian spiders emerged to attack them. They quickly mopped up the last of the guardian spiders on the field. No one from Sky Palace was injured, but a few more of the demon had gotten torn up. Furthermore, it was Sky Palace that took care of the red spider. It looks like I need to hurry up and bring Ningyu here. I hope that he can develop here, Hansen thought to himself. Weird. With the power of the three races working together to kill the spiders, this should not have been that hard. Why are there loads of dead Buddhas and dragons here? And why wasn't there a single dead spider amongst them upon our entry? Yuni looked over one of the spider bodies and frowned. It's because we didn't touch the spiders. A voice resonated across the path from someplace at the back of the palace. Dragon 8 appeared with a few of the dragon and Buddha in tow. There was no sign of the destroyed, however. Things suddenly became very tense. The Sky Palace students readied themselves for a fight, but the Buddha and the dragons all seemed injured. There had been some serious fighting, from the looks of things. Do not worry. We are not your enemies now, Dragon 9 said from behind Dragon 8. Dragon 8, what do you mean? Khan couldn't see Dragon 9, and so he asked Dragon 8. Dragon 8 CDMLY said, The destroyed tricked us. They were familiar with this place already, and they knew some of its secrets. They lured us to dangerous parts of the city and got many of us killed. The destroyed then went deeper into the palace, and we have no idea what they are trying to accomplish. Umidba. And whatever it is they are planning, it doesn't look good to us. The destroyed don't seem to want us to get out of here alive and let others know what transpired here. A Buddha Marquis said. Are you saying the giant city is in some way related to the destroyed? I thought the Brakes guys were the original inhabitants, Khan said skeptically. When we reached the back of the palace, we came across a statue with three heads and six arms. It was the exact depiction of the destroyed. If our assumptions are correct, the destroyed might once have been part of the Brakes guys, Dragon 8 said. If that's true, then we're in serious trouble. We cannot leave the planet. 
and the destroyed will try to kill us all in order to keep their secrets. They aren't going to let us leave, Yinny said. Suddenly, a strange voice boomed through the hall. You guys are right. Don't even think about getting out alive. Since you're here, why not die here? The voice startled everyone. They looked around for a minute before they realized that it was actually the statue that was talking. As the metal statue spoke, its body began to move. The statue was previously in a sitting position, but when it stood up, its head broke through the ceiling. It swung a fist and cleared away half of the roof. Seeing the giant fist continuing down towards them, everyone moved to evade it. But the fist wasn't the real threat. When the roof above them was broken open, the dragonfly-looking Xenogeneix swarmed down through the opening. The entire place fell into chaos. The metal statue punched a few more times, and the palace was almost entirely demolished. Han San and the others tried slashing the metal statue, but the attacks barely scratched it. They decided to fall back from the palace through the cracks that had formed. But there were many dragonfly Xenogeneix buzzing through the air now, and that made their escape more difficult. While they were sprinting away, more explosions came from the ruins. Many giant metal statues rose out of the destruction and turned in their direction. Han San noticed that one of the metal statues was at least a thousand meters tall. It had three heads and six arms, and it looked exactly like a destroyed. The four races were all in extreme danger. The metal Xenogeneix hounded them relentlessly. The metal statues were scary, too, as their strength was equivalent to a king. The metal statue that chased Han Sin opened its mouth wide and spat out fire like a geyser of hell's flames. Not too far away, there was an extra evil looking blue giant a godlight shone from its chest, casting a 50 meter long beam that destroyed everything that it touched. The other giants released their own powers. Their eyes were shining red, and they were all headed for Han San and the others. The teams all started to feel their hope dwindle. Although there were many strong Marquises around them, at the end of the day, they were just Marquises. They could not fight the giant metal statues. Plus, there were metal dragonflies and Xenogeneix all about. They wouldn't even have a chance to escape. Come over here. Han San realized that fighting would be useless, so he quickly gathered all the Sky Palace people to him. Yuya echoed Han Sen's command to all the members through the swordmark, in case they did not hear Han Sen's voice amidst the chaos. Many of the Sky Palace students came to Han Senator when Khan saw this. He brought his few remaining demons over as well. Dragon 8 and the Buddha followed, too. They tightened their formation and annihilated the nearby dragonfly Xenogeneix. But that hellfire-like power was on its way, and many other powers were coming for them, too. Escaping seemed impossible. Boom! The metal statue's fire engulfed them, but it did not incinerate them. Instead, a blue Bicema suddenly appeared. Han San and his people were inside it, shielded from the scary fires. When the fire touched the blue Bicema, the fire shattered. And then, the power of the other statues hit the Bicema. They exerted all their strength, but it was for naught. They could not break the Bicema. A dozen scary metal statues surrounded them. They loomed over the Bicema like hungry demons staring at Han San and the other Marquises inside. Han San, I have heard your name before, but I certainly did not expect to see you here. The three-headed, six-armed statue stepped in front of the Bicema. The bird head in its center peered directly at Han Senator. It looked how a demon might, when staring at a defenseless baby in an abandoned stroller. To Han San and the others, the strength of the metal statues was awe-inspiring. They were completely surrounded. And of course, the dragonfly-like Xenogeneix were still flying about. There were too many of the insects to count, which made the situation of Han Sen's team completely depressing. Who are you? Han Sen asked, looking up at the giant three-headed, six-armed statue. My name is Klinsman of the Destroyed, the statue replied. As it spoke, the other statues stopped trying to attack. They merely stood where they were. I did not expect the destroyed to be part of the break skies, Han San said coldly. Klinsman laughed and said, You are incorrect. The destroyed are not a part of the break spies, as you suggest. We are the royalty of the break skies. Those stupid giants were just slaves with a few drops of our blood in their systems. We are the real break skies. So, 
This is the home of a deified break sky? Han sin asket kur yu sli. Klinsman laughed. I know you are merely stalling for time, but that is fine. The destroyed control everything here. You cannot hope to run. After a brief pause, Klinsman continued on to say, This is the house of a deified break sky. And yes, it has been abandoned. The deified elite it once belonged to has long been missing. But the break sky dolls he left behind are enough for us to claim the entire metal world for ourselves. Those who are above the rank of marquees are not permitted entry, so our grip as rulers of this place is not challenged. This place will become the primary xenogenic space of the destroyed. And as for your place here, Klinsman turned his metal bird head to stare at each of them. If you people are willing to concede, the destroyed will welcome you as members of Metal World Society. Klinsman, I'm afraid I don't quite share your optimism, Hansen said thoughtfully. What do you mean? The woman's face, the face to the right of the bird head, turned toward him. Hansen looked around and said, I have heard that before you came to this city, this place was already the site of a battle. So what? Of course there was once a fight. Otherwise, why would it be a ruin? The woman said. Hansen laughed and said, Metal World's power is strong enough that outsiders cannot break through, and only Marquises can be sent in to do research. That means the powers from the outside are unable to affect this place. But if that is so, why was there a fight dangerous enough to force a deified elite to abandon this place? Klinsman frowned. The man's face of the statue then spoke instead. Perhaps the attacker broke through the power of Metal World and forced himself in? The same power that prohibited five of our elites from breaking through? If that deified elite did force his way through, do you really think the Break Skies could have escaped to being like that? And even if they ran, why would that elite take over Metal World and not lay a lasting claim on the place? Hansen went on to say, What do you mean? The woman asked again. If my assumptions are correct, the Break Skies didn't abandon this place because of enemies from beyond. Their greatest threat must have come from the planet itself. What are you trying to say? The statue next to Klinsman looked annoyed. Hansen laughed and said, the power that threatened the break skies, if it came from the planet, focused only on you. I doubt that it threatened anyone other than the break skies. If I were you, I wouldn't be so cocky. I might be thinking about running as far away as possible, actually. There is a high chance that you'll be killed well before us. Nonsense. If there was a power like that, it would be long gone. If it exists, then why hasn't it shown up? Hansen, I admire your intelligence. I do not want to kill you. I am throwing you one last lifeline here. Concede, and I will stay my cruelty. The bird head smiled grimly. Hansen did not speak again. He merely focused on how he might get out of the situation they were in. The things he was telling Klinsman weren't all a bluff. If the power that wiped out of the break skies truly did come from the planet, it wouldn't be extinguished so easily. After all the years that had passed, that power might still exist somewhere. If you truly seek death, then I will grant your wish. Klinsman commanded a dozen Break Sky statues to attack the Bicerna. The Break Sky dolls launched a variety of terrifying powers which converged on the demon bug Bicema. The blue Bicema trembled, and it looked ready to buckle and break. Hansen thought things were pretty dire. Each Break Sky doll had king class power. If Hansen shrank the demon bug Bicema to shield just himself, its strength would be concentrated enough to withstand the force of his aggressors. Even if ten kings attacked him, they'd be unable to penetrate its defense. But now, Han Sen had his demon bug by Sima stretched to shield 100 Sky Palace students, and the demon, Buddha, and dragon as well. The defense was stretched thin, and thus, it was weakened. It couldn't protect them from a constant stream of attacks from a dozen dolls. Seeing the by Sima quiver, they all knew it was going to break soon. And Hansen also knew they'd have to run. They couldn't stay where they were. Even if he kicked out the demon, Buddha, and dragon, the demon bug by Sima likely wouldn't be enough to keep the hundred Marquises safe, either. Hansen, let us out. Perhaps some can survive that way, Dragon 8 shouted, knowing that the by Sima was about to break. Umidba, we have to fight, a Buddha Marquis said. Khan frowned. His face kept flickering through a cycle of different emotions. He knew their situation was dire. Han San wished to say something, 
But just as he was about to speak, the earth began to shake like a huge earthquake was underway. And then, an enormous sinkhole opened in the city. The metal surface caved in, falling into the seemingly bottomless hole. The sound of explosions echoed up out of the hole, signaling that something big was coming. All of the Break Sky dolls stopped attacking Hansan and turned their attention to the bottomless pit. The dragonfly Xenogeneix all buzzed away. They flew straight out of the city, jostling each other in their panic. If there was a power that was able to force the deified Break Sky to abandon the planet, it would probably kill anything in its path. No way. I was right. Hansen smiled vrillu. The Break Sky dolls that were commanded by Klinsmen all took a step back. They peered at the giant hole. 